4.2% of total games seen? Seriously? Wow. Let's see. Uh, I don't remember what I did last time, so I'm going to do some recon since it's the only one that doesn't have two. And recon four. That security guard I met when I arrived might be a good lead. Time for a bit of interrogation work. I've been staring at the back of his head for a long time now. Too long. I'm starting to feel creepy. I just don't understand it. All he does is sit in that chair by the dock, eating egg sandwiches and doing crossword puzzles. How does a man like that become a, the security guard for a place like this? As far as I can tell, his job consists of greeting the boat to make sure nothing unauthorized gets on or off of it, picking up supply deliveries and occasionally taking a long, lazy lap of the island to make sure everything's secure. I wonder what he knows about the research that goes on here, if any, if anything. He doesn't seem to be interested regardless. I decide it's time to get to know this island bouncer and go to join him at the dock. I sit next to Zane, me on the sand, him in that chair. He's not wearing his big coat, and the short-sleeved shirt allows me to notice for the first time how surprisingly muscular he is. I never truly thought of him as a, a security in the bodyguard sense, but now, squinting at him sideways, trying not to stare too obviously, I begin to see him in a new light. Let me make sure that the thing is on. The desktop audio isn't on, though. Whoopsie. At least people could hear me talk. I pluck up the courage to talk. Hi, Zane. How are you? He looks different without the coat. Are you trying to start a conversation? He says this without looking up from his crossword puzzle. Oh, um, I suppose I am, yes. I don't get to chat to humans much in my job. Research Assistant 125. He rolls the word words out like he's reading them. Oh, yes, I guess that's me. So, what does the number stand for, anyhow? You don't know? He asks monotonously. M monotonously. Monotonous. My bad. I've never seen monotonous spelled out. Give me a break. Monotonously, eyes still glued to his crossword puzzle. No, actually, to be honest, Zane, I don't know much at all. There's a definite lack of intel sharing on this project. Which project would that be? Uh, this one. The whole research project that's going on. Is there more than one? Depends who you ask. You... I... I was just asking you, really. I don't understand your job. I don't need to. I don't care about things I don't need to. What do you care about? Zane looks at me for the first time. You really want to talk, don't you? Well, there's not much else to do here. Besides, I'm interested uh, in it all, aren't you? My interests consist of what's for dinner and when my next puzzle book's coming. When it's coming, you get it delivered? Comes with the mail. He's back to not looking at me again. The mail? You mean the parcels? And the letters, yeah. The letters? Who would go to the trouble of sending mail all the way out here when we have email? I laugh, but Zane looks very serious. It's safer sending mail the old fashioned way. With email, there's viruses, hackers, worms, cyber terrorists. I get the feeling he's not very tech-savvy. Tech 
Yeah, but anyone can open and read a letter, right? Not if I'm around. And besides, who would suspect that something important would be in a fragrant pink envelope? There's an awkward silence. Of course, being my usual socially inept self, I'm desperate to fill it. Need any help with that crossword? I'm pretty good. I can even do cryptic, uh, the cryptic puzzle in the Daily Inquirer. This line usually gains me a little kudos, but Zane simply ignores me. I decide to just come out and say what's on my mind. I mean, I can't make things more awkward than they already are. Zane, have you ever noticed anything strange going on here? Cats behaving weirdly? Zane suddenly looks up, his eyes lock locking straight on mine, unwavering and hard. No, have you? Well, not exactly, but... He's looking at me properly for the first time since we met. I have definitely captured his attention, but I'm too nervous to follow through. I'm just being silly. The lack of human company can get to me. Gives me a... Gives me daft ideas. Such as? He's still staring at me as though he's trying to read my mind. Sometimes when I'm out tagging, I feel they're playing games on me, like children, hide and seek, that kind of thing. Some of those cats may be cleverer than any of us give them credit for. Now it's my turn to be intrigued. In what way? They know when to stay out of the sun. You're going pink. The moment, if there was one, is over. I decide maybe Zane isn't the best person to talk to about my concerns. Feeling unwanted and slightly dejected, I decide to head back to camp. I stand up and brush the sand off me. What's a five-letter word for solitude? Alone. Alone. <laughs> Zane silently scribbles in his book as, as I leave. about running out of stuff. I'm gonna try not to romance. Actually, mm. is there any more research to be done? Ready to leave? Once you complete your research, your time on Cat Island will come to an end. Have you seen everything you want? No, 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 no. Recon. Uh, you only have one heart remaining. If you choose to continue, it will have ne negative consequences. You can restore hearts by choosing to rest. Choose again. You're looking a little tired. Okay, so when you have one heart, that's bad. You have a lovely nap and wake up feeling revitalized. Your energy has been restored. Magic! Okay, then I guess the only option I have is to romance. Or to recon. Uh, I might have to go back. Yeah, nope. I have nothing... I have nothing else to do. Everything else is locked. And then... The research. Mm. I don't want to romance without Joshi here because I know he wants to see Murphy's uh, stuff, but uh, romance. Oh, I broke Snooty Booty's heart. I'm sorry, Snooty Booty. A day to be slaving in the hot lab in a hot lab. Oh wait, okay, so he's not talking. It's me. My bad. It's too beautiful a day to be slaving in a hot lab. So when Murph invited me for a stroll, it was easy to say yes. Not that I'd need much incentive to spend time with him. He's very engaging company. 
We've come to one of my favorite spots where the cliffs sweep toward up, sweep upwards above the blue water. Suddenly, and without any warning, McMurphy plunges over the top of the tower and rocks. I run to the cliff's edge with my heart in my mouth to see what's happened. And there is a sight I still haven't got I still haven't got used to. He's in the water, more otter than cat, waving me to follow. Jump, Kara, jump! Sure, the water's grand. McMurphy! I'm shocked by the shrillness of my voice. Well, that wasn't very shrill. I hadn't intended it to be quite such a shriek. I was aiming for a for stern admonishment. That's so dangerous! You could do yourself serious injury or worse from such a height! Oh, Pish, come on, Kara, or you won't get to see the little surprise I have in store. You've already surprised me enough for one day. Ha! Huh, which one of us is meant to be... Uh, which one of us is meant to be the pussy? At this, I am filled with an indulgence that takes over my body, and before I know it, I am halfway between ledge and water, bracing for impact. This way! I'm still catching my breath as McMurphy's head disappears under the surface. My mind is saying, no, this is ridiculous, get back to land this instant, but my body is following the Irish cat. My eyes take a moment to adjust, but when they do, I can hardly believe what I'm, what I'm looking at. It's a ship. As we approach from the stern, it looks pretty much intact. I can see the name on the rear port side, and though faded and worn away in parts, the words are unmistakable. Kitty's Desire. My head is swimming due to the excitement and lack of oxygen. I flounder to the surface to catch my breath. Kitty's Desire? I feel like I know that name. Murphy eventually bobs up to join me on the surface. Surprised. A shipwreck? Here? This is a very old island, Kara. A lot has happened here. But how did a ship even get here before the path was made? Hey, don't ask me, Kara. I'm just in it for the go- for the grog. For the grog, oh god. <sighs> McMurphy smiles and dives back into the murky depths. I follow a flailing flesh bag in comparison to Murphy's sleek figure. I try to get a closer look at the wreckage. It's a big ship, likely a trading vessel judging from its si from the size. It's hard to tell how old it is, but it certainly isn't modern, maybe 18th, 19th century. When we enter the ship from a huge hole in the stern, I realize that a lot of the vessel is actually on land, and it's obvious that it ran ashore after it was damaged at sea. There's not much time to ponder the mechanics of what happened as McMurphy is tugging at my t-shirt with his right paw while gesturing with his other paw outstretched to a cabin he wants me to enter. I'm grateful for the air trapped inside and gasp for breath. Here, Kara, look! Hang on, let me catch my... But he's already ducked into the next cell. How is he not out of breath? I... Re I realize his ability to swim underwater is unusually strong, but he barely breaks the surface at all. In here, through the hole. He sounds really excited, and as I enter, I see why. There, in the center of the cabin, is a chest. It's wedged between the wall and a surprisingly well-preserved writing desk, the only thing preventing it from falling and being buried in the sand. A treasure chest! I sound like a giddy child and feel embarrassed, but McMurphy joins in my glee, and suddenly we're cheering and laughing together. Go on then, open it, Kara! Okay! What are you waiting for? The key? Uh, does it need one? Well, of course it does, Murph. It's a locked treasure chest. Can you... Can you not just break the lock? 
Who do you think I am, Houdini? I don't know about that, but I do know you're a very clever scientist whose thirst for knowledge matches my thirst for grog. So, <laughs> so you get yours and I'll go get mine. The Magi... The Magi grins before darting into the, ne into the next cabin, and I hear the familiar clinking of bottles shortly after. I decide to try the lock anyway while McMurphy is getting his. I look around for something, anything I could lever it with. And, and I'm disappointed. Everything except the chest and desk must have been washed away a long time ago. We'll have to come back with some tools to tackle that lock, Murph. There comes no response. McMurphy is obviously still busy with his looting and pillaging, so I decide to swim to the beach to get a better look at this wreck from land. When I take in the scene properly, I can make out what looks like another large ship just a bit further down the beach. I can hardly believe what I'm seeing. One huge, one huge sea vessel finding its way to this island is strange. It's strange enough, but two meeting the same unhappy fate is more than my brain can process. The proximity of the pair would suggest a collision of some kind. Possibly the second vessel could have been a pirate ship. Maybe it was attacking the merchant vessel? I get the feeling I'm looking at the conclusion of a very interesting story here. I wonder why Professor Popper didn't tell me about it. Hi, I decided to stream just a little bit. Yeah. I'm probably only gonna I'm probably gonna stop around like six or so. Wait, so you're gonna stream for three hours? That's not a little bit. That's not a little bit. So a little bit, and compared to my like six to eight hour streams. Considering your minimum is three hours. True. Yeah, a little bit is not three hours. Are yeah, but I'm camera? doing my bare minimum though. Are you on camera? No. I don't have the camera on. I haven't been feeling like having my camera on. So what have I missed? Please tell me I haven't had any romance with Murphy. Uh, this is the first romance with Murphy. He brought us to this. Can ship you rewind? No. How much have I missed? Uh, Murphy much? jumped off a cliff into water, brought us to the shipwreck called the Kitty's Desire. Mm -hmm. We um, found a treasure chest, and now he's looking for booze while we try to um, open, it? open the treasure chest. I am heard that you would start a romance with McMurphy without me. I tried! I tried to wait, but I didn't know how oh. long you'd be. Oh, you try, tried for, all of what, five minutes? I did recon first. Research? If I if I finish the research, it's the end of the chapter. You sure? Yes, It. I tried to research. It said, if, if you finish the research, it'll be the end of your time here on Cat Island, or whatever the heck it was. Well, I'm just hurt. Taken. <laughs> I wonder why Professor Popper didn't tell me about it. Obviously, he must be aware of the two vessels. S what the heck, Joshua? Stop. You know, my cat. You know McMurphy's my cat. How what? McMurphy's my cat. How could you? That hurts. Hmm. So much. My nose for intrigue has started to twitch and I'm burning to know more. I decide to take some of the debris, splinters, and small chunks of metal and pocket it for later analysis in the lab. When I'm satisfied that I've thoroughly combed the beach for specimens and have salvaged anything of interest, I realize that I haven't seen McMurphy for quite, for quite a while. My heart stops and the hairs on my neck stand on end. How could I have been so wrapped up in my work that I neglected to keep an eye on my friend? McMurphy? I met with silence and still water. I run back towards Kitty's desire, my heart pumping in my chest. McMurphy! I jump in the sea and swim back to the stern of the ship. There doesn't seem to be any life around here. I break through the surface with a choke and try to call out again, but my throat is hoarse and full, and full of salt water. Where? I catch 
I catch sight of a shadow out of the corner of my eye crawling along the seabed. I dive under to get a better look and see instantly that it's the Irish cat, stalking and prowling as if he were on land. I quickly grab him by the scruff of the neck and drag him back to shore. McMurphy, you loon! What on earth were you playing at? I catch my breath and check on him, <laughs> but he's happily rolling on his back in the sand. Me, yeah, I was having a grand time until you manhandled me with those big meaty paws of yours. Ah, uh, let it go. Big meaty what? I would say get, get serious. Wait, really? Yes, show you care. Anyway. This is showing that. Yeah, you but, but yeah, uh, just just keep reading. Charming, I must say. I'll have you know, I was very worried about you. And I fully appreciate it, Kara. Hmm. Hmm. Meaty paws. <laughs> McMurphy has started laughing, and it's too infectious not to join in. Seriously, though, Mac, that was some very impressive breath control. I didn't see you come up for air once. I think I get it from my mother, God bless her. I wish she had fantastic lungs. Do you remember her? Flashes sometimes, but Kara. And I'm on that grog, I have all kinds of flashes, so who knows what's real and it isn't. I can feel he's nudging me off that subject, so I respect his privacy. What do you know about these two beauties, then? We survey the ships in silence for a moment or two. I know that they've been a source of great pleasure for me, Kara. Beyond that, I don't play the care too much. You really, you really are the embodi embodiment of hedonism. I'll take that as a compliment, Kara. I can't help but laugh. You would. There's worse things in life than a little pleasure. True, but a little balance may be even better. And that's where you come in. Huh? You bring some balance to me, Kara. You let me be, but you help me stay safe. Yes, I suppose so. And you bring some spice to what might otherwise be a rather bland scientist's taste. Like Murphy's green eyes glitter in the sunlight and he throws me a wink. Come on then, swashbuckler. I need something to eat after all that adventuring. I'll walk you back to camp if you promise to save a bite for your friendly tour guide. <laughs> mm. <gasps> <Ooh. gasps> yes! New unlocks of yes! Pirate's Tale Extras. Yes, Quinn! After it saves, you can cut it and then you don't see what it is. Speak of the devil. <laughs> Extras! Okay, you don't have to quit. Nope. Pirates. Pirates! Pirates! Should I do something a little different? I've made my way down to the part of the beach where McMurphy told me the shipwrecks were. I'm looking for clues as to what happened here in case it's useful to my work on the antidote. In, on the antidote. I don't really know what I'm looking for. I feel a bit like a kid with my bucket and spade digging in the sand. Captain Corn. Captain Corn. Having fun. The voice startles me. It's unfamiliar, and I can't see who it belongs to, so I'm on my guard. Who's that? Show yourself! I have nothing to hide, but I am naturally, I am naturally wary of your intentions. Will you give me a word of honor that you mean me no harm? Um, yes, you have my word of honor. I feel like a cub scout. I take you at your word and I'm happy to make your acquaintance. Captain Corn. A tall, sleek, gray cat has stepped from behind the wreckage and is bowing in front of me. I feel obligated. I feel obliged to bow back at him. I'm pleased to meet you, Captain. Do you live here? In the wreckage, I mean. I think I live elsewhere, but I've been here for a long time. I'm trying to find my crew. I realize he's wearing a vintage naval uniform. I'm not I'm not an expert on military history, but I'd guess it's from the 1800s. Uh, Captain, did you arrive on one of these ships? Yes, I captained the Kitty's Desire, but I fear I let my men down. Where are they? I've been searching. He seems quite disoriented. What happened? Looks like you had a bit of a run-in. Run-in, my eye. I 
maliciously set upon and attacked, more like. This disgrace of a vessel is a pirate ship. Be careful who you're calling names, Corn. They might just take umbrage, and then the cat will really will have got your tongue. Another cat has appeared, a petite, long-haired tabby, also dressed in some, some kind of costume. Identify yourself, stranger. The new cat has turned to me. Uh, hello, my name is Moon, and this is Captain... I know who he is, alright. What are you doing in my domain, Moon? State your business. I was just digging around, not sure what for. I certainly don't, didn't know it was your domain. It's not. This is unclaimed land as yet. I dispute that the ownership belongs to this rogue and cutthroat. Hang on, hang on. Let's not get overexcited. Who's a rogue? That's not a nice thing to say about a fellow cat. Do not put me in the same sentence as that mercenary ne'er-do-well. She is a pirate. Oh. Oh, uh, that's a female cat. Okay. You know what to do. I kind of figured. Uh... Calm yourself, Corny. Right now, I'm more interested in what this human is digging for. Oh, nothing in particular. Are you really a pirate? I refuse to discuss my business in the company of this pompous goody two paws. If you wish to speak with me, you'll need to see me alone. And off she walks with her tail in the air. Thank goodness that vermin has left us, however, she does make a point. If you wish to see what really happened here, you're going to have to make a choice. Her story or mine? Ah, crap. Who do we want to trust? The pirate or the, the pirate or the, the pirate or the good guy? <laughs> what do you mean the pirate or the good guy? I vote pirate rebels. Who, who would who would make Murphy go for? The pirate. The pirates got rum. Without even answering Captain Corn, I turn and chase after the long-haired tabby, a real-life pirate who would pass up the opportunity to interview us, to interview to a swashbuckling freebooter. That grabber though. Yeah. Very prob probably uh, England English. I'm thinking. Or just a typo. Maybe it's uh, it's hard to tell. Excuse me. Tua. Excuse me, Miss Pi You just did this so I have to talk to myself. No, if you want, I'll read this, sir. No, that's fine. Miss Pirate? As we reach the forest, the cat stops and, if you want, I'll do narration. and turns to face me. She straightens herself up onto her hind legs and takes an elaborate bow. Lady Elizabeth H. Rutherford. I'm taken aback at her sudden transformation from savage to lady. My subordinates call me Captain. My buckos call me Libby. She returns to all fours. Pleased to meet you, Captain. It truly is an honor. Enough with the nice talk, human. You want to hear my story? Well, you'd best sit down if not for the faint hearted. I do as I'm told and sit on the muddy ground. I suppose the first thing you'll want to know is how a refined young lady of noble birth became a buccaneer with such a fearsome reputation. I want to hear everything, that is, if you're happy to tell me. It will make a change, talking to anyone other than that old windbag. Captain Corn? The very same. It was the likes of him that my poor brave mother escaped from. With a babe in arms and only the clothes on her back, she threw her lot in with a picaroon rather than stay in her cheating, cowardly world. There. 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 Cheating, cowardly world. A picaroon? A pirate! Not just any old pirate, mind you. My father was the wiliest sea wolf of them all, feared and respected and loved. Your father was. I call him that because he raised me as his own, and mother brought me to him when I was not yet a year old, and he took me in without question because of his love Aww. for her. Never once did he treat me any less than as if I was his natural child. I never knew my blood father, but I 
but I heard enough to know he was the cruelest, meanest beast, worse by far than any I've danced with on account. He was a peer of the realm and was on Daddy Purse String. What? Purse Purse String. Purse Strings. Oh, okay. Purse String. Purse Strings payroll for getting bills passed that really should have had more security. Scrutiny. Scrutiny. I'm tired. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. No. More scrutiny. I legitly did see security, not scrutiny. Uh, they were a law unto themselves, those men. Hornswogglers, a lot of them. Okay, then. Okay. When did we get on a ship? Oh, I think she just, uh, I think, I think it's just flashbacks. Oh, probably. But I digress. My father brought me up as a water rat proper. By the time I was ten, there was nothing I didn't know about sailing. By howdy, sixteen, I was Matt, running. Howdy, Mr. Chaos. Doc. Hello! V Gates! Hey, what? I said V Gates, which, which is how goes it, basically, but shortened. How does it? I've been wondering where you've gotten to. Welcome back to Twitch, and yeah, I'm still streaming. Welcome to cat. Welcome to cats. Welcome to cats. Uh, by what? sixteen, I was running my own ship, the Catfish, and taking men on no prey, no pay runs. I was good, if I do say so myself, and I gained a reputation for bringing home the bounty. I, I. Oh, that, there's a period there. It's just tiny. Okay. I had ambitions, too. I dreamed of being as rich as Daddy Purse Strings himself before my 21st birthday. So how did you end up here, Captain? We'd been going through a lean patch. Not just us. It was the same all over. The men were hungry and were still thirsty. You can't deprive a pirate of his grog for long without a mutiny rumbling through the ranks. When one of my boys put forward the proposal that we try our luck taking on the Desire, a Kitty Fisher merchant ship, my first reaction was to Stonewall. Normally, we didn't touch a Fisher. They're too well rigged and too well armed, but you can't outrun them. So you can't. So you can't outrun them. You can't overpower them. However, desperate times calls for desperate measures. And I decided to think, uh, think it through a bit more. Fishers are big and strong, but their captains are clueless as soon as they go off their designated route. Get them out in open water and they're lost as lambs. That's the trouble with which rich folk. They can afford to buy the best vessels, but they don't know how to sail them. Now I ain't no, pr I ain't got no problems with Daddy personally, in, in spite of the company he keeps. But his ships are well stocked, and my men were starving, so it seemed only fair we take from the fat and give to the lean. Mm-hmm. I put I put my hand up in the air to signify I have a question, Captain. Le Captain Libby gives me an exasperated look. What are you waving at? Sorry, but you keep mentioning a daddy. Who is he? Who is Daddy Purse Strings? Gods, only the fattest cat of them all. That land lover had the coin to change the world, and what does he do? He invests in creams and powders. He... he was a cosmetics tycoon? He was an old fool with too much money and not enough sense. Do you want to sit around and talk about things that don't matter, or do you want to hear the rest of my story? I'm sorry, yes, please continue. 
So, me and Jim, that's my cabin lad, drew up charts and made a plan. The ideal was to track the desire from a safe distance without being spotted, and when we reached the midway point furthest from land either way, try to badger her until leaving her path. We used these tactics many times, tire them out, then start pushing off course. If the weather turns bad, so much the better for us. The gods were ready for that. Eh, mm, the gods were really on our side that raid. Uh, on our side on raid day. The height of summer should have meant calm seas all the way, but no. Thick black clouds loomed over us, darkening by the minute. By the time we were chasing the desire, I could barely see my own hand in front of my face. Ooh, she said hand. You think she, you think the cap the Humans, captains yep. have been uh Humans ca turned catified? Into yep. Absolutely. In front of my face, I realized the storm had now become our enemy too. A life on the seas has taught me well about weather. But that was something else. The sea raged and the lightning flashed. We knew our vessel could not take this battering. The only way for any of us to survive would to be abandoned the catfish and call a truce with the merchants. We had to board the desire. We downed our weapons and raised our arms above our, above our heads. But out comes that coward corn, musket raised, ready to blow us all away. He knew he was sur uh, he knew we was surrendering, but he came at us anyway. His arrogance scuttled us all, his crew as well as mine, and in the ensuing rumpus we all faced Davy Jones' locker. Rumpus. 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 I don't know what happened next. Rumpus. I woke up on land with no idea how long I'd been there. Rumpus. But it didn't take long to see that we'd gone from one bed, from one bad situation into a far worse one. It was a rumpus. We managed, somehow, to work together, us and the tops, to get as many men as possible out of the water and onto dry land. We salvaged all we could and made our camps as we saw fit. Them on higher ground, us by the water's edge on the beach here. No pirate wants to be too far away from the sea for long. Not that it helped us in the end. The, this place was cursed. There were things that weren't right. Do you mean the cats? They were starving, the men. They tried to hunt, but there was nothing here. We never saw a bird or bear or any kind of beast other than them cats. I tried my best to keep them, keep them from the inevitable. I foraged around and made all manner of stews and soups from the plants and tubers I gathered. But they became obsessed with meat. All I could do in the end was watch in horror as the nightmare engulfed us all. Only a few of us didn't succumb, wouldn't take part in the savagery, but even so, we weren't spared. All it took was one scratch, one simple, one small swipe of a cloth, and the change began. Oh, the rain clouds. Those rain clouds over her, over her head, her picture. Oh, okay, yeah. As the sun shines upon her tiny cat face, it glistens and... I can see she's crying. I'm not sure how to handle this. Ought I comfort her? Is she a fearless pirate? She is a fearless pirate, after all. Even though right now she looks like a little lost cat. Aw, oh, Ringclouds. I'm so sorry for what happened to you and your crew, Captain. I'm working very hard to put things right. Be patient, and I give you my word that all will be restored to how it, to how it should be. I need to go. She's sulking into the for skulking into the forest, but before she disappears, she half turns. Libby. You can call me Libby. Hmm. You wanna see if you can go do go see corns? Oh, I don't know. There are corns outside of the story. If you recon, does it end the thing? I don't have anything to recon, though. 
both of them were complete. Okay, well, let's keep going with the romance. Yep. That Kit Kat. Because if I try to research, it says once you complete your research, your time on Cat Island will come to an end. Have you seen everything you wanted to see? Okay, so let's keep going with romance. So, romance. Hey! Hey! <clears throat> He's so adorable. His, his toony self. As the sun is going down, I decide to retreat into my tent for the night. When I undo the flap, I see McMurphy curled up asleep on my pillow. Uh, McMurphy, you're gonna get fur all over everything! Oh, hi there, Kara. You're back late, you rapscallion. Why are you in my bed? Oh, come now. We both knew I'd get in your bed eventually, didn't we? My hand reaches for the spray bottle, but McMurphy throws up his paws defensively. I'm an unarmed cat, Kara. I'm actually trying to give you something for good behavior. Don't make me send it back now. Give me something? What? It's barbed. <laughs> ah, sure. Now you're listening. I found something that just might interest you. It's purple, it's bullet shaped, and it goes boop. <laughs> I can tell you, look, I can tell you, that was your time on Cat Island has been making you a bit lonely. If it's more of that grog, McMurphy, I can assure you I'm not interested in the slightest. I sit on the end of my bunk and push him off my pillow, but allow him to stay on the bed as, <clears throat> as he moves reluctantly aside. I can see a black corner poking up from under my blanket. What's that? Why don't you take a look? I, I am skeptically nervous of what he's roping me into now. Tell me what it is first. Ah, well, you just pick it up, Kara. It won't bite. I carefully reach for it and realize it's a small leather book. Beautifully aged and, and yet seems to be in good condition. I open it as gently as I can for fear that it might turn turn to ash in my hands. On the first page, smudged and faded, but not destroyed by time or water, are the words, Captain's Log. I can't stop myself from gasping out loud. Oh, Murph, where? How did you find this? There's a lot you can find at the bottom of, the bo of a bottle. Or twelve, I am impressed. Impressed? Speechless. I could kiss your furry head! Well, don't let me stand in the way of you and your passion. I hardly notice he's still speaking as I have begun trying to decipher the entries and I'm instantly engrossed. 1789, the men are getting restless. I begin to fear for the continued safe running of this vessel, my vessel, of which they are in, <clears throat> in mind to take ownership. If my captain's instincts serve me right. Uh, are you listening? Oh, sorry, what? I said maybe I should leave you to it then. Yes. No, wait! McMurphy, tell me where you really got this from. Was it the treasure chest? No, Kara, would you believe it? That thing is full of nothing but sand and salt water. Back with the treasure, on the other hand, I found it at the bottom of one of my crates of grog, hidden in between the bottles. But this belongs to a captain. Why would it be with the crew's provisions? I'll let you figure that one out, Brainiac. Think you realize the puzzles to keep you amused on all of your cold, lonely nights. That and the, th that and the thing that goes, huh? And McMurphy smirks and saunters out of my tent. Oh, we gone. Yes! Yes! New unlocks! That is cute! Okay, I'm worried. Okay, click recon. Let's see if it'll, if, it, if the thing pops up. It doesn't. Okay, let's do recon. The diary Vic Murphy discovered in the shipwreck could have some invaluable information in it. The book Vic Murphy gave me is sitting on my lap. I wonder what a pirate's diary is doing on on this island. Maybe there will be some clues within. The log reads, I felt an almighty... You think this is Libby? Let's see if it gives a name at the end. Okay. 
you want me to read it just in case or sure i felt an almighty crash and then silence and stillness everywhere it took a few seconds to gather my thoughts and understand what had happened here if it were really possible to understand this godforsaken place and how we got so far off course to reach here but in that moment immediately after we hit the rocks i knew two things i was alive and we were on land and i felt grateful it felt like a chance at survival and I was determined to grasp it. I felt my legs intact, thank God. I began crawling over the slate and shingle that seemed to stretch upwards to eternity. What type of place was this? Darkness was falling past, but I needed to make sure we, were be, we would be safe in this unexplained ter unexplored terrain. Who knew what would happen during the long night? What creatures it may bring, even what strange meteor meteor meteorological anomalies. Looking at the sky, I felt anything was possible, and we ought to be prepared. We had to work fast. I assembled the men, ragtag, raggled, raggle taggle though we were, into some kind of orderly unit in the hope that the familiarity of discipline would raise the morale. We were all tired, cold, and hungry. Some of us needed medical attention. This was not going to be easy, but it's what I was trained for, and I'd rather die than let my men down. We need to make some shelter. My voice sounded thin and weak against the sound of the waves crashing. At first light, I looked around and began to take stock properly. It was gratifying to see that the temporary shelter we had cobbled together last night was still intact, and no disaster had befallen us to the, to add to the difficulties we were already burdened with. Considering the conditions we have erected this makeshift cover in how short a time, I felt heartened for the first time since we were out at sea before the strange electrical storm began that ended with us being thrust here against the unforgiving rocks of this terrifying place. We could do so much more with daylight on our side and food in our bellies. So they were shipwrecked on this island? The thought of being the first inhabitants here is terrifying. How on earth did they survive? Maybe they didn't. I want to believe that they were rescued, but that seems unlikely. I will read more this evening. As I put the book away, a small piece of paper falls into my lap. It must have been hidden am amongst the pages of the log. It it's a note, maybe a letter? picture of this and read it if I know the name. Mm -hmm. Can you do a screenshot? Or let me... Hold on, I got an idea. Uh, let's see if I can pause. How do you, how can you pause? You don't. You can't pause it at all? On, because I know you can pause on, on uh, computer. I know, but on here, as far as I can tell, you can't, because there's no pause button. <sighs> you want me to read it? I just want to see if I can pause this. Uh, I'm going to read it as McMurphy just in case. Okay. Sadly, I know you worry for me, but do not. The men do not treat me bad. They give me food and not, do not beat me so much anymore. The cat is not so fearsome as what they say and is giving me lessons on my writing. I'm improving. I practice all night because I can't sleep. I work hard sometimes till my hands my hands crack and bleed, but I still use them every morning to pray for you that you are safe and well and that we will be together once again. I miss you so much. The seas have not been smooth. Sometimes I worry that we'll capsize completely and be lost forever. Lost lost out here forever, but I could swim to the I could swim the wildest ocean back to you, my sweet sister. I hope you I hope you are practicing your writing too. I'd love to read your color poems again. Your loving brother, Jim. What a sweet letter. I wonder what became of Jim. Or maybe it's with Murphy. Oh wait. Uh, oh wait, nope. Rast. Yep. So I tried uh, doing something mm -hmm. with just one heart, mm -hmm. and it was basically like, uh, you're looking a bit tired. If you, you only have one heart left, if you continue, there will be uh, consequences. Okay, so you need to stop when you have one heart left. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
You had a lovely nap and wake up feeling revitalized. And she has been restored. Magic! Love us, McMurphy. Love us. McMurphy. Look at that star. And now take yourself a thousand miles beyond it and tell me what you see. I laugh as McMurphy passes me the bottle. I take a swig before replying. McMurphy, what are you talking about? Just do it, Carla. That big shiny one way up there. Go a thousand miles beyond and tell me where you get to. I smile. I'm partying on Venus. Oh, yeah. There's so many goddesses. Oh. So many goddesses here, McMurphy. They're all naked. You should see this. Apparently, we're a lesbian. Uh, uh, or bi. The oh, laughing boy. stops, or maybe it was only in my head to begin with. I look down at the fluffy cat who seems far off from his usual self. Uh, you okay, kitty cat? I think there's a big pub up in that sky. McMurphy <laughs> grins and closes his eyes. There I am. My big human toe is warmed by the fireplace. And my long, my long hair is the same dark golden color as the ale I have in my man hand. They're singing, lots of it, and people dancing all around. Those that can't find space to dance on the floor, dance on the tables, naturally. It's an old sky pirate in the corner telling his stories to anyone who'll listen in of the time he sailed to Jupiter or Mars. Near there too, of course. They're sat right next to me. They've unlimited drinks because the famous in these parts were practically royalty. There's a dog right there by the stool. Doggo! Ale, stout, beer, whiskey too, they just keep coming. When it gets dark and the place is quiet, we sneak out back to the beer garden. There's a clear view of Earth from where we're sitting, and we don't miss it. Murphy spits. We talk about our adventures, about how we sailed off of this damned island and how the ship became out of one. We talk about how we fought the big-breasted, bloodthirsty alien winches of, winches of the Emerald Star. And how we've had to charm our way out of the space slugs there. And I reckon we'd have a lot of fun. Of course you wouldn't be able to keep your paws off me. You'd be begging for a kiss and I'd be saying, No, Cara, I'm not a piece of meat, you know. And you'd be saying, Oh, McMurphy, please, just one of your world-famous kisses. The fancy French kind. And I'd be saying, Please, Cara, control yourself. I start snickering again. What are you laughing at? You. Are you trying to say that you couldn't be all over me if I was a human? Of course I wouldn't. Ouch, now don't be mean. You'd be the one begging me for a kiss. What on earth gives you that idea? What the hell? I, th I think it's her try It's her doing a Murphy impression. So it's ah, like top of the morning to you, Kara. I love you so much to be sure. Give me a smack of... Begora! That is so offensive. I stopped laughing. I I went a little too far there, so I'm sorry. <laughs> McMurphy lets out a wry smile. Well, maybe I would I would try to steal a little kiss. Who could blame me? You wouldn't get one. Well, he said he had long hair as a human, so who McMurphy's knows? McMurphy's smile disappears. You know something, Kara? Huh? I think I should just come out and say it. Say what? You are all right. There's a pause, not an uncomfortable pause, just a slightly confusing one. Oh, that's McMurphy. You're all right too. McMurphy is gazing at the stars. I don't know what I'm doing. It's a strange feeling. I'm used to being a step ahead of a step ahead of everybody. Well, two steps ahead of you. <laughs> hey, don't be rude, Murph. I laugh. <laughs> Make Murphy grins. This feeling, it isn't new to me, but I'm still not sure what it is. All I know is you get me in a way no you get me in a way no one has before. And I get you too, even if you don't care to admit it. I guess it's time to let the cat out of the bag. Without thinking, I walk around. I'm so used to bagging and unbagging cats from my <laughs> 
I take him literally, but this is, but his expression stops me from reacting. I have become attached to you in these last few weeks. You've captured my heart, and I, I don't want to be without you, Kara. Love us, McMurphy. Love us. Well, I, I wasn't expecting that, McMurphy. I haven't. I haven't had so much fun, felt so free, or been so happy as the time I've spent with you. I don't think I'd care to be without you either. You have my heart. To my surprise, McMurphy looks visibly relieved. Well, Kara, I look forward to many more adventures with you. Aww. Relationship, Relationship goals, goals. McMurphy! McMurphy. Alright, there's only one so thing left to do. Wait, can we click, re click romance, see if there's anything else I'll come up. Like, it won't even nope. let us. Okay, nope. that's all there is to do in this chapter. Yep. Nope. That's all there is. Yes, I'm ready. Research 12. Today I'm in the lab doing flora research. It's not the most exciting job, but I. But if I keep my head down, I can get through it quickly enough. It really just consists of unpacking the new samples of plants and flowers that the professor and I have collected on our foraging expeditions, and logging them into the database of organic substances on the computer. <clears throat> Most of them are commonplace plants that grow abundantly in the forest, but occasionally we come across something more rare, exotic even. One of the samples I'm looking at today is... I'm not even getting... Calendula and Canna Maritima. Okay, which is very interesting indeed. I can't help speculating that it's been cultivated in the Marigold's little greenhouse and been transplanted to open ground. I'm distracted momentarily by the sound of clinking <laughs> glass, and I turn to see the beautifully manicured paw of a sphinx cat tapping on a beaker, nudging it perilously close to the edge of the counter. No. Boots, stop that! You're not supposed to be in here! She laughs as though I've told a joke. That's a frightfully... That's a frightfully pretty flower. Calendulite and Canna Maritima. If I am not mistaken. Oh, hold on. Calendulite and can in Canna Maritima. You never cease to I amaze you me, would Boots. After How me. on earth did you know that? Why, I make it my business to know all about rare and valuable works of art. Oh, do you, Squirrel Cat? Why not? It has been, it has been created like a sculpture. A sculpture or a painting. The marigolds are true artists in the garden. In the garden. Uh, ah, I wondered if they had something to do with this. It's so unusual, even in, even in its natural swampy habitat. But I, but to have it growing here in the forest is very out of the ordinary. Yes, its prop, uh, properties are extraordinary too, human. Well, I'm quite new to botanical science, so I probably don't know the half of it. Why don't you fill me in? Although I'm always happy to facilitate your learning, human, I simply can't stay here a moment longer. The air is so stale, don't you find? I ignore her, I ignore her sideways glance and upturned nose. Let's go to the beach and drink some coconut water. I'll tell you everything you need to know. Snoots, I'm not going anywhere until I finish this. Don't be ri <clears throat> Don't be ridiculous. You can tinker about in here any time, but the sun will be gone in an hour or two. I'm not tinkering. This is my job. If I don't get it done, the professor will want to know why. Then explain to him you had better things to do. Snooty booty, I won't tell you again. If he catches you here, Popper will cage you. Be careful with that flower, human. It doesn't do to inhale that fragrance too deeply. What? I turn to ask why, sh why and see her flounce out, knocking the beaker with a swish of her tail as she does. You did that on purpose! 
But she's gone, leaving me to clear up the broken glass. to the forest to gather my thoughts. This morning I noticed another change in my appearance. Up until now, it's been easy to cover up my transition. I just had to keep on top of removing the excess body hair. Even the stub of a tail had appeared a few days ago. Uh, even appeared. the stub of a tail that appeared a few days ago hasn't been a problem. Who'd see it? new development is definitely a turning point. How am I going to explain the fact that my pupils have turned into vertical slits? I can't risk anyone seeing me like this, so I'm going to hide out for a while and see what happens. It's a beautiful night, and McMurphy and I are laying on the sand by the old shipwrecks, relaxed in the way that only cats can be. When I remember back to all the anxiety and stress I used to live with, <clears throat> the endless hours fretting over the antidote research and it makes my fur stand up, I thought our lives depended upon it. It was my love for McMurphy that finally got me to see sense. Why was I so desperate to make him the same as me? Hadn't I fallen for him the way he was? So I decided to turn it on its head and become like him. Howdy, son. Howdy, Mikey. Hi, Mikey. Wow. I lose track after the, thirty. Um, do you not see the picture? Yeah, I see it. Ugh. You did not react to that. No, I seen your love. Huh? Just depend. No, not you, Mikey. It's to McMurphy. How dare you? I uh, professing your love to me now. <laughs> you came just in time. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Our love's for McMurphy. <laughs> you homewrecker. We're laying out under the stars. I can't help smiling to myself when I remember how cold I used to think it was at night. Mac used to rib me for my whining. Now here I am, as snug as can be, counting the stars with the cat I love more than anything else in the world. You see, the trouble is, Kara, you're still thinking like a scientist. What do you mean? So when you count the stars, you begin at one, and soon you're going to keep chanting numbers until you've quantified the whole entire galaxy. Like, okay then, He laughs until the his pose. eyes twinkle with moisture. Oh yeah? Go on then, Murph, the wise. Enlighten me on a better way of counting. So if you ask you how many stars there are, I take an overall squint at the sky. Judge how cloudy or clear it is and decide if there's enough light to hunt. Not too much is the right amount for that, by the way, or too little light for a snooze. Best when it's bright, or just enough to steal a kiss from your sweetheart. Then judging by this sky tonight... He nuzzles into my fur and I am the happiest cat in the universe. of the game scene. Eric Murphy! Uh, ending achieved, love drunk. What happens if we fit? Okay, so we do want to keep... Three successful dates? Is that what that says? Yes. Hmm. Told you you should have been serious when you, when you were uh, worried about him. Oh. We play as six different humans. Mm -hmm. Stereotypical white girl named Becky. Uh, this girl's totally Becky. 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 Oh my god, Becky. <laughs> if I could like random name. Be you, Jessica, Dorothy. Oh my god, Stacy. Stacy, should we name her Stacy? O M J Stacy. You batch. OMG. 
Oh my god, are you serious, though? Next two months, I initially received a letter saying... Uh, on reserves list for the job. On reserves list for the job, I thought that was probably a kind of... Uh, a kind way of saying no thanks and put it out of my mind. <clears throat> so imagine my surprise when sometime later I got a call saying there's an opening for me. Should, should I still be interested? Oh my god, Stacy. I have a sudden pang of nerves that it's all a dream and rummage through my bag. Blah. Dear Stacy. Stacy. Offer you a research assistant job. Look forward to working with you. Blah, blah. Blah. Stacy. Blah, blah. Is this literally blah. all the same? Blah. Thanks, Skipper. Blah. Thanks, Skipper. <laughs> Kill ignores, ignores me. Blah, blah. Oh, uh, gee, Stacy. If you look at man who I presume the is good. Blah, blah, blah. Hello. So we can just skip through all this. Huh? Blah. Just click through all this. Main card on the mainland. Blah. I don't know. I don't understand it. When was the other one issued? One one. Oh, because day month they're going by European, so this is two months later. Oh, um, okay. Two months later. So it's gonna um, take a year for us to find the freaking antidote. Oh, I'm G Stacy. Blah, blah blah, blah. Just click through faster, please. Come in, come in, you must be Stacy. Oh my god, it's Bill Nye the science guy! You can get our white girl wasted and that say, uh, who'd let you drink whiskey on your own. Jolly good. Wow, Popper. Popper's gonna get us white girl wasted. We didn't see this one before. Jolly, uh, jolly good. I can tell you and I are gonna get along famously. I take this one from the bottle and passes it to me. I try not to show off my self consciousness and surreptitiously wipe the neck with my sleeve before taking a modest sip. I don't know what is this it. Is this part? Of, is this part of the pool? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yep, that's the keep going. I noticed something odd. A little dug out under my bed, I reach in and pull out an unexpected find, the personal journal of the previous research assistant, the one before me, they must have forgotten it or left it behind? It's an absolute goldmine of information, it's going to get me up to speed with how, with how it all works around here in no time. However, it seems something else was happening here on the island, something that was troubling them. I get the feeling there's far more going on here than the professor would have would have me know. In spite of my increasing tiredness, I continue to read and the journal gets weirder and weirder to the point where I'm not sure whether I'm still reading or if I've dozed off and I'm now dreaming of talking cats and kidnappings. Eventually I lose the battle and drift into a deep sleep. Here we go. I hear a scratching sound and the rustling of paper coming from the tent flap. It's a cat with something in its mouth. Suddenly I'm wide awake. No! It has the journal! Wait! There's oh, I'm Jay! Cat, no! Before I know it, I'm out in the cold night chasing it, running with all my might. Oh my god, Becky's gonna I kill me. I get that book back. It has everything I need to know in it. Gotta get back in that book. Barefoot, just in only a t-shirt and shorts, running at full speed into the forest in the dark of night. This is familiar. I know, I read this in the journal. Something similar happened to the previous assistant. Yet here I am, falling for the same trap. I must be crazy. 
Oh. This level stop. I think I'm going to be sick. I realize, of course, this, I'm close to the danger zone. Everything goes back, goes black, and, <laughs> and I fall to the ground. Never mind, it's a calico cat. That one that I skinned yesterday is standing in front of me. She drops the journal from her mouth. I pass out. Can you hear me? Are you okay? Here we go again. Move back a bit. Let them breathe. Has it been bitten? The sphinx cat, the sphinx cat is sta standing over me, staring as I open my eyes. Yes, yeah, definitely bitten. Look at hand. I bring my hand up to my face, and though, and through blurry vision, I can make out several deep scratches and puncture marks. The cats watch me intently. Is this real? I need something in. I read something in the journal about kidnapping. Kidnapping! Yeah! We're sorry, it was the only way. You! You stole the journal! Oh, but I gave it back to you. But. Why did you take it? To do you are here, sucker! There's no need for rudeness, Kibbles. My head has begun to clear, and I realize that if I can talk to these cats, not only is it all true, but it's already too late. I have the sickness. And now we're, we're just gonna be standing. Here. Uh, we need to have a talk, human. No, we don't. I know what's going on here. I read all about it from your last victim. Now, Kata, that's not very nice. We can already think of you as our champion. McMurphy, you silver-tongued Irish charmer. My reputation goes before me. Oh, I... Oh, I know who you all are from the journal, so let's cut to the chase here. You just did that, dummy. You know what I mean. What happens now? Keep reading the notes. That will tell you all we know so far. Hang on. Who are you? You're not mentioned in the journal. <laughs> you figure it out. It's not my problem anymore. Hey! The new cat slinks off towards the nice forest area. Nice attitude. What? N nice attitude. You're, that's not my problem anymore. Oh. oh, don't worry about them. They're preoccupied elsewhere. Help <laughs> the kitties. Ah. <sighs> I suppose my fate is already sealed. I may as well do my best to help you sort this mess out. Oh, I'm gonna turn you on again. Well, this one's than the last. Oh, whoops. I thought okay. this one's better than the last one. I was looking at her. Well, the last one was pretty good, actually. <laughs> Unfortunately, they didn't get very far with discovering an antidote of what happened to our friends. My catalog starts beeping. Oh, my alarm! I have to get to work. Okay, oh. skip, 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 I make it back to the lab fairly quickly, considering how little sleep I've had. I wonder if that's one of the effects of the feline transition. I'm Imagine my ability, ah, my agility levels will change. Levels. I'm strangely excited about getting to work on the antidote. It's the sort of challenge that I love. What I'm just about to enter levels. the lab nice. to begin my legitimate work when the catalog beeps a message without any contact information. Something to oh. best kept to oneself. Ominous. I don't have time to work this puzzle out right now, though. I'm already going to be late for work if I don't get a move on. The professor is already working when I arrive, but miraculously I'm not late, so there's no fuss. I get through the day as, effect as efficiently as possible and head back to my tent as soon as my work is done. I want to get to grips with finding out all I can as soon as possible. Do you mind? Nope. 
I do. Please stop. He hasn't said much else. This cat's eyes are bothering me. The one on the right. Oh, um. Wait, what? Floofy Butt. That's that's that cat's name. The one on the right is Floofy Butt. I'm just not talking about McMurphy. But you and I are gonna have a fight <laughs> there. Uh, I think he means the cat with the red eyes. Yeah, but he wasn't. He didn't just send that. That's been there. I know. I want to get to grips with finding out all I can as soon as possible. You talked about McGurk and you. That's them fighting for us, buddy. Uh, so it's 4 It's 4.20. I don't know if you want to keep streaming or not. Yeah, I said until about 6. Okay, I wasn't sure if you if you changed your mic then or you said you wanted it to be a short stream. It is a short stream compared to my usual. Not when your minimum is 3 hours. It is when my usual is 6 or 8. No, no iffy about it. No, more or less. No, more or less about it. No, 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 when you're... <sighs> uh, let's start with seeing who we can romance. Okay. Trixie, er, yeah, no. Floofy, but... Ah! Duh, that's ah. cute. Or snooty booty. I feel bad for uh this is snooty booty. For spurning uh But do you wanna have snooty booty get with a lesbian? Nah. Do you like do you wanna leave the girls with the men and the girls and the boys with the girls? Yeah, I, I guess. Or if you wanna be. go for snooty booty, go Yeah, for snooty booty. booty. Let's just let's just go with snooty booty. Cause I feel bad for not choosing her last time. No, I don't have to read, so I'm just gonna fight some Pokemon. It, it worked. <sighs> I'm splayed out like a starfish on the oh, beach in my again. bathing clothes. It's a splutteringly hot day, and I find it hard to concentrate on my work. So here I am. Let the cool sea. I let this cool sea wash over my feet, and. That is distracting as all heck. I'm Joshua. Trying, I'm trying to not, I'm trying to get your hand, the, the hand the, t I'm trying to have your hand to make the nose go. You, I'm you're trying like, to get you to stop your nonsense. Whatever. <sighs> I'm about to be dead. Uh, feet and legs as I lay back on the sand. I hear a long, loud sigh coming from somewhere nearby, and I sit up to see where it came from. Snooty booty in response under the shade of a... In, in repose. Oh, I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Under the <laughs> shade of a palm tree is looking about about her with a concerned expression, one that I've never really seen a cat make before. I go over to her to see if I can help with something. Are you okay, Snooty Booty? For she lets out another long, long, wistful sigh. For a moment, I thought it was. I, I saw it in the corner of my eye a figure, and I thought it was somebody like standing out to the sea, like in a in nothing but like a pink band around their chest. <laughs> For some reason, they had scrotum skin. To be quite frank with you, human, no, I am not okay. I cannot expose this delicate skin of mine to the sun. But there is something I need to retrieve from further down the beach. It is quite the predicament. Oh, right. Want me to fetch it for you? Oh! Would you really be so kind, human? I would be very grateful. Sure, it's no problem. We can't have you putting that delicate skin of yours at risk, can we? Snooty booty, lo snooty booty looks grave. Indeed not. Skin care must come above all else, don't you know? Hair care. What? Oh, hair care but above skin care. It's just me. One must never expose one's skin to the elements, human. It's really, it really is quite aging. One must also never get stressed if one wishes to retrain to retain one's youthful aura, which is rather difficult on this frightful island. Oh, I know, believe me. How do you know? Are you stressed? Oh no, that would upset me terribly. Really? 
that's sweet of you. Of course, you are... You really are a precious thing. I do so hope you find your time here pleasant. Don't worry about me, Snooty Booty. I'm fine. Now, what was it you'd like me to get for you? Well, before I tell you, I must ask that you don't inform the others of the whereabouts of this particular item. It is very dear to me, you see, and one of the few luxuries I have all to myself. Of course, that's no problem. I can be discreet when I need to be. I do hope so, human. You see, along the beach just south of here, there is a tree which bears the ripest of coconuts all year round. It is quite splendid. The coconuts are always so sweet and creamy. I'll give you something Snooty sweet Snooty Booty looks creamy. as if she's lost in a wonderful dream. Um, sounds lovely? It is! I like to drink coconut water as often as I can, as it is so good for the skin and waistline. But the less civilized denizens of the island keep knocking the coconuts down before they're fully matured. I had to breathe. Fortunately, <laughs> no one seems to ha have discovered this particular tree yet. Well, okay, Snooty Booty, I'll try to find some coconuts for you. I'll be back soon. You have my thanks, human. I've been walking for a lot longer than Snooty Booty led me to believe. I'm not sure if this is even the right tree. They all look the same to me, although this one does seem to have more coconuts than the others. I decide to take a chance and bundle up as many as I can carry in my arms and haul them back to her ladyship. By the time I get back to Snooty Booty, I'm faint from the exertion, but the mention not to mention walking so far in the sun. I fall to my knees, panting in front of her. Here you go, Boots. She eyes the pile with a distinct air of disapproval. I only needed one coconut human. Oh. These are far too many. Well, I do apologize, madam. Tell me you didn't plunder the tree. No, there were plenty on the ground already, so... Oh well, that's a small mercy. At least you didn't hack them down. Hack them down? With what? Well, your hands are rather large and leathery. <laughs> Snooty booty, I do not use my hands for deforestation. Well, I'm sure you did your very best, although I really don't know what I'm going to do with so many coconuts. You're welcome, I'm sure. I look down at the pile of coconuts and it strikes me properly for the first time how strange it is that there are no creatures on the island, island to plunder them. What do you think it is, Snoots, that keeps wildlife away from the island? Do you mean the magnetic barrier? Magnetic barrier? Oh, do keep up, human. I thought you were smart to be a. S I thought you. Uh, I thought you were meant to be a scientist. I realize she must be referring to the force field that surrounds the island. Now, be a deer and crack one open for me. With my enormous hands. Well, you could try, I suppose. I push down the irritation that is slowly rising in me and smile politely. On um, second cat. thoughts, I'll be right back with a screwdriver. A what? Huh? Why did we want this cat again? Uh, I felt bad for not choosing her last time. Why did we, want, why did we think about choosing her last time? She was one of, one of the only other... She was the only other option. <laughs> so before, it, was, it would have been lack of options. Now it's pity. Yep. Good, we have no good reason to date her. Just want to make sure. <laughs> Snooty booty, snooty booty looks horrified. It's a sharp metal tool that bores into things. What on earth do you need one of those for? So that I can make a hole to get the water out of the coconut. How else do you propose I do it? Well, look around you, dear. Look at nature's bounties. What about that? 
smoothie gestures with a limp paw at a shard, at a shard of rock nearby. Snoots, how do you usually get the water out of the coconut when there isn't a human around? Well, the exuberant kibble simply loves to break, loves to break things. Had you not noticed? It's one of the few things I taught. Few reasons I tolerate him, don't you know? Far better than one of your screw, screw dribble, dribbers, screw don't you? I would have assumed you'd say screw drivers. Screw drivers, don't you think? Hmm. I reach over and pick up a rock. It does look like it could actually do the job. Okay, let's give it a try. Uh, okay, let's give it a try. Here goes. Holding the coconut in a palm leaf, I gem gently tap the shell a few times with the stone before finally whacking it. It cracks open surprisingly e easily, and the water drains into the leaf. There now. See how, see how nature provides, human. Yep, again, you're welcome. Quite. Snooty Bitty stretches her neck and then up her body towards the leaf. She sticks her tongue out as far as it can go before raising her big eyes to me. I can't quite seem to. Let me help. I suddenly realize what she's getting at. Let me help. I let her struggle for a moment or two before I begin to feel a bit like a child pulling the wings off of a fly. She can't help the way she is. You seem to be struggling a little, Boots. Well, you've placed my libation slightly out of my reach. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like me to help bring it a little closer, perhaps? I can't tell if that's sarcasm. Huh? I can't tell if that was sarcasm or not. I can't help, I can't help but being sarcastic. No, no, I can't tell if the text was. Oh, I'm not sure either. Well, of course I would, human. Are you being deliberately obtuse? I would very much like to help you, Snoots, but you make it rather difficult. <laughs> that null face. How? I don't understand. I've been perfectly clear in my instruction. You see, I am under a spell. It is a very powerful one, which prevents me from following any instruction unless accompanied by some magic words. Oh? Would you, <laughs> oh, would you care to enlighten me? Well, it would go something like this. Please, human, would you mind passing me my libation? Thank you very much. There's a pause during which I'm not, which I'm really not sure what Snooty Booty is thinking. Suddenly the Sphinx erupts into pearls of laughter. It seems I have forgotten my manners. Please do be so kind, human, I would be most obliged. Oh, go on then. I nudge the leaf closer to her and she delicately laughs at it. I truly am indebted, many thanks. That looks delicious. Mmm. -hmm. Snooty agrees without taking a break. You know, searching for those coconuts was thirsty work. I'm sure it was. <laughs> She's still laughing at the water. Nah. <laughs> Oh, my throat is a bit scratchy, especially in this heat. Finally, the snooty booty finally comes up for air. Quite. That's the beauty of the coconut, you see. So hydrating and most palpable, too. You really ought to try it sometime. I look down at the now dry palm leaf. Yes, that's a good idea, Boots. And the very best thing after drinking oh coconut water God. is to curl up and have a nap, you know. Beauty sleep is most important. Oh, is that so? God, I hate this cat. <laughs> I love voicing her, but I hate her. Indeed, human. I hope you have other things suppose, to do now. I suppose you have other things to do now. Oh, I suppose you have other things to do now. Uh, well. Snooty Booty yawns and closes her eyes. I suppose I do. Sweet dreams, princess. She snores softly in reply. Already checked chat, nothing. Can I recon something? 
Oh, I can recon some stuff. Let's see, who gets to recon? Actually, no, let's go in order. Research. Oh, research, only research four? Oh wait, is there other things that open up once I finish research yep. four? Yeah, okay. six lead to does any lead to six yep uh and that's number nine. nine anything after nine no because you can only do three things at a time just not sure okay i never thought i could add feline hairstylist to my cv but it looks like today's my lucky day grooming cats Put on my, late, my latex gloves and gather my tools. Brush, scissors, swabs, kitty wipes. I can't help but think I've forgotten something. Ah, of course, treats! I leave the tent and head for the lab, stopping to stroke a few of the island's residents on the way. Meow, meow, meow. I call out to the lazy subjects as I enter the lab. Looky, looky, what I have... What have I... Oh, oh, looky, looky, what have I got? I shake the bag of treats and the small lab erupts with hungry meows. If you want these, you'll have to behave, okay? I open the first crate, home of the grouchy Mr. Bumble. I gently lift him onto the counter to be groomed. Good morning, Grumpy. Let me check your ears. No debris? No debris. Lovely. I have a feeling you might be discharged in the next day or two. He was brought in with a mild infection, slight temperature, weepy eyes, but he seems to have recovered remarkably well. In fact, I'm going to recommend to Professor Popper that we release him by the end of the week. I give Mr. Bumble a cheeky cuddle before I begin to brush his matted fur. Wow, where does it all come from? There's enough fur here to make another cat! Mr. Bumble is beginning to get agitated and lets out a displeased grumble. I know, I know, it's very annoying. Just gotta trim you up a bit, and then you can go back to sleep. Then you can get back to sleep. He resignedly lets me cut some of the hair around his bum and the back of his, his hind legs. Aren't you a good boy? He, here we go, um num num. I pour some of the little fish shaped treats onto the counter and the ragamuffin practically inhales them. Now, let's get you back into your cozy cozy crate. I tuck him away and open the next one. Your turn, socks. Just a cut in color, okay? Just a cut in color, yeah? I snort at my own joke and begin... Ooh, never, never laugh at your own joke. And begin brushing the little cat the little white cat. He's a lot more lively than old Bumble, but keeps trying and keeps trying to bite the brush. Hey, don't make me get the harness socks. That's no fun for either of us. The cat to seems bite? to understand and settles oh, down, gosh. only giving the brush an occasional nip when he thinks I won't notice. Oh, hello. What's this? I notice a little red patch on his neck, just under his chin. Oh uh, no, we don't. We don't have butt flies, do we? Poor so Soxy. I take the magnifying glass out of my inner pocket and examine the inflamed area closer. Ouch! Sox begins to struggle away from me. He must be in quite a lot of discomfort. It's okay, Sox. I'm just looking. I stroke the little cat and try to calm him down. I hate using 
sedatives on the subjects unless absolutely necessary. After a while, I'm able to get a better look at the wound. There doesn't seem to be anything living under there. Under here. I'm relieved I don't have, have to deal with any bot flies. Hmm, it looks strange. It's like a rash or a sore, but I'm not sure how or where he could have picked it up. I'm worried about how to proceed. Should I just clean it with some saline solution and let the air get to it? Or should I put some of the Professor Soothing Cream 116 on it and wrap it in gauze? What do you think? I want to say cream. You want to say cream? Because I, I was thinking cream too. Cream 116 is designed for conditions like this, so I suppose that's what I should use. As I approach, Socks arches his back and puffs up his fur. I'm surprised by his reaction. He's normally quite a brave little soldier. Maybe it stings? I dab a little of the cream onto my arm to see what the effect is. After a few minutes, I realize what a twit I'm being. The cream, a cream designed for a cat is hardly going to affect my skin. I get on with the job in hand and apply the cream to a very peeved socks. Later that evening, I notice a small patch of smooth, pale skin on my arm and realize the hair has rubbed off. Cream 116. Yes! Yes! Maybe the cream is what's causing the patches! <laughs> something intriguing, I better check it out. Stacy, are you still sleeping? You really ought to be awake by now. Snooty Booty, are you okay? Stacey. What are you doing in my tent? All this lazing about is bad for your complexion. To say nothing of to say nothing about the dragging effects on the delicate tissue around the around the eyes. Is there something I can help you with? Possibly. I have something I want you to look at. Right now? What time is it? Time you were active. Come along. Well, at least let me get ready. Very well. Snooty Booty sits down and starts grooming herself. After a moment, she looks up again. Why aren't you ready yet? I, um, can you leave the tent so that I can get dressed? For goodness sake. Snooty Buddy rolls her eyes and walks out. I get dressed. Re uh, resignedly and follow her. What do you think it is? I'm intrigued. We're on the beach, staring at a partially buried bottle sealed inside a plastic bag. It looks as though it has only recently washed up. Well, there's really only one way to find out. I pull the bottle out of the sand. It has some kind of document or note in the bag along with the bottle. What is that thing? Read it to me. It's a good thing I'm just as curious as Snooty, or I w would be feeling a lot more irritable by now. I carefully unseal the bag and unfold the paper. I read the note out loud. Initial tests on the most recent formula are encouraging. Subjects 6 through 18 appear visibly younger. Moderate to severe side effects noted, including increased hair growth and marked mood alteration. Subjects 1 through 5 had major complications, some new, some new small tumors, skin irritation, partial blindness, memory loss. We need you to look into this, check for contaminants, and continue to iterate on, this form on the formula. 
appeared visibly younger. Snooty booty. That is the most important thing you gathered from this from this report. You're quite right, Stacy. We ought not to trust it. That note could have been written by anyone. We shall we shall conduct our own experiment. Apply the cream to my skin. Have you lost your mind, Snooty Booty? Did you not hear what I read what I read out? Tumors, blindness, memory loss. Statistics bore me. You should know that by now. Let's live a little. I'm willing to take the risk in the name of science. No, Turn we're not taking dogs, any Snooty risks. Booty. Yeah. We're not taking any risks, Snooty Booty. You wait here while I go and get my kit bag from the lab. Let's see if we can't work out what this stuff is made of. I was hoping the lab would be free, but the, but the professor is in here making some notes. Hello, Stacy. I thought you were taking a day off from the lab today. Oh, yes, I am, Professor. I just uh, wanted to check something. I can't take the test equipment away without the Professor getting suspicious. I'll have to come up with some kind of excuse. Uh... A freaking excuse? Yeah. Well, I wanted to get ahead on some of the field work. There are some samples I found that I think could be useful. I pick up the field kit bag. Popper looks up from his work. Oh, uh, what sort of samples? I have to make this believable, but also invite no other questions. The samples are fecal. Fecal? Yes, a large poo, sir. It has rather interesting properties. It's all good. Off you go then. Nailed it. I take the bag and leave. As I approach the beach, it becomes clear Snooty Booty has managed to break into the ointment. She appears to have spilled some and is now busy rolling around in it. Snooty Booty, what were you thinking? This could be very dangerous. The only danger here is this ghastly sand sticking to my delicate skin. Do help me get rid of it, Stacy. I try to wipe the sand off, but it but it is stuck like glue. Underneath the layer of sand, I can see her skin is very pink. There is no time to lose. I pick her up and run to the ocean, trying to use the seawater to clean off as much of the ointment as I she can. She's not gonna like that. Put me down! What on earth? I've never been so humiliated in my life! She twists out of my grip and scampers off in a hop. I think I've got it all... I think I've got it all off, so I leave her to it. Now, back to the samples. There's not much I can do here on the beach, so I'll just have to wait until Professor Popper has finished in the lab. Well, that was quick. As luck would have it, the professor needed to retire to his tent earlier than usual. He has he has to read some research papers that arrived from the main, mainland this morning. So now I can continue looking into, into this ointment. I begin by testing the substances for several common compounds found in cosmetics, but it's negative for all of them. I widen the tests for other organic compounds. I get a match. About 30% of the ointment is... Cat saliva? If they were using saliva from the cats on the island, they could be infecting all their test subjects with catification. But where have these other side effects come from? I run the ointment again, this time looking for known pharmaceuticals before I <clears throat> pharmaceuticals. Before I can get the results back, Snoobody comes trotting in. I just thought you should know that the security guard is coming this way. You should make yourself scarce before he arrives. Not that I care what happens to you after you threw me into the ocean. I have no time to finish this experiment now, but I will work on it later in the privacy of my tent. I take my things and run before Zane arrives. That was long. Uh-huh. Uh, time to rest. Mm -hmm. Yet 
had a lovely nap and wake up feeling revitalized. Your energy has been restored. Magic! Oh, do you believe in magic? In Stacy's heart. Romance again. Mm hmm. Oh, fluffy butt. Fluffy butt stroking hearted. <laughs> Me and my type 2 diabetes will just be over there, then. <laughs> Snooty booty? Snoots? I've been searching for the Sphinx for what feels like ages. For a cat that never seems to move, she's surprisingly difficult to find. I'm answered eventually by an unintelligible murmur coming from the shade of a nearby tree. Of course she's sleeping. Snooty booty? I poke her gently to try to rouse her. I have something for you. A gift, as it happens. Oh, human, it's you. Whatever are you doing up and about at this time? It's midday, Boots. Snooty stares at me uncomprehend uncomprehendingly. I have an hour for lunch. I have an hour for lunch, and I came to spend it with you. But if it's not a convenient time, I could always find something else to do. Wait, you mentioned a gift. Well, yes, I suppose. I had the idea when we were drinking. Well, when you were drinking from the coconut. I fetched you, uh, the coconut I fetched for you the other day. I took some of the remaining coconuts over to the lab and cooked up some coconut oil. Snooty booty opens her mouth wide. I sit awkwardly staring at her, unsure what exactly she's doing. Well, I'm ready to break my fast, human. It's hard sometimes to know whether to laugh or spit with this spoiled feline. No, Boots, this isn't for eating. You mentioned how good coconut drinking coconut water is for you, so I thought you might like some coconut oil to rub onto your into your skin, keep you moisture moisturized and youthful. Aren't you terribly clever? I can't help but blush. Snooty booty rarely compliments anyone, so I feel honored. You may begin. Snooty booty lulls onto her back, exposing her plump pink tummy to me. Yeah, plump. Oh, you want me to rub it in for you? Plump. Snooty booty simply simply smiles in response. Well, a fleas wouldn't go amiss. Yes, well, I didn't want to make a fuss, but if you would prefer, uh, but I would prefer if you asked first. I sigh. There's not much point in arguing with Princess Snooty Booty. I don't think she actually means to be rude. Sometimes she just doesn't seem to understand how to talk to people as equals. I don't have the energy to deal with it today, but I make a note that at some point she and I are going to have a little chat about etiquette. <laughs> <sighs> Please may I rub this coconut oil into your skin? Yes, you may! I pour some of the pungent liquid into the palm of my hand and rub it together with the other. I have no idea what I'm doing as I've never mas massaged anyone before, but I work along the lines of putting uh, of putting sun cream on a friend. As I touch the warm loose skin on Snooty Booty's primordial pouch, I'm struck by how delicate she really is, and I try to be as gentle as possible. Is that okay? You're very skill skillful with your hands, human. Uh, okay. I do so wish I had these thumb things. They seem so useful. They're quite handy, to be honest, but paws are cool too. too. Hmm. Snooty Bitty lazily inspects one of her paws. Do my paws next, will you? Snooty's skin is reacting well to the treatment and has become shiny and pliant. I see the I see the good it's doing. Okay, just random. I see the good it's doing. I move on to massage her paws, but I'm quite taken aback by this by the length of her claws. Oh my boots, your claws are really quite long. Don't you use a scratch post or anything? Uh, what? 
you know, something abrasive to file them on. Whatever for? Bo is part of being a cat, really. Stops them from catching on things. Snooty Booty is peering at me with one judgmental eye open. Got on what, exactly? Oh, I don't know. Snoots, don't worry about it. I'm sure it's fine. Oh no, do go on. I'm intrigued. You seem to be implying that there is a degree of neglect in my grooming. No, I most certainly am not. You are by far the most high-maintenance, I mean, highly groomed cat I've ever seen. In fact, you are the perfect example of a s sphinx. I am a what sphinx? She's trying to get me to say perfect again. It's hard to keep my face straight. Absolutely perfect, Snoots. And you're an expert? Well, I wouldn't call myself that, but I have been reading up on Sphinx cats and you have all of the characteristics of a pedigree. That's very sweet of you to say so. Remind me, what would those be? I hesitate for a moment, trying to remember what pause for thought listed as the top features to look for in a sphinx. There was a rather, uh, there was rather a lot of info, and I want to give her the best bits. Should I flatter her, or should I be accurate? Flatter. Okay. I, I, uh, I don't know. I don't want to insult her by being accurate, so I guess I'll flatter her. Well, let's see. I have a feeling Snoopy would not appreciate some of the common qualities of a sphinx. Oh, okay. Including wrinkles and pot bellies. Yep. So I decided to cherry pick and dress it up a bit. Sphinx, sphinx cats are well known for their beautiful big eyes and high prominent cheekbones. Snooty Booty extends her neck and widens her eyes. She also appears to suck in her cheeks, which gives her the look of someone who's not wearing their dentures. <laughs> it's very disconcerting. And they have a very shapely physique. This isn't strictly true. Sphinxes tend to be quite muscular, but something tells me Snooty Booty wouldn't approve of that description. She has now extended her entire body into what looks like a yoga stretch. <laughs> I see. Go on. Their skin is soft, buttery. This is sort of true because they don't have fur to soak up excess oils. Sphinx cats can become quite greasy. It is recommended that they be patted down with a cloth as part of their regular grooming. Yeah. I'm listening. And uh, they're very regal. Regal? I'm not sure where that word came from, but Snooty Booty seems to enjoy it. Well, well, human, it seems you have a vast and accurate knowledge of my kind. I'm rather impressed with you. I blush. It's not often that she gives out compliments, but when she does, it makes you feel like... Uh, it makes you feel a million dollars? Makes you feel like a million dollars, I'm just gonna say it that way. What did I say? More messages? No, just something. Just a tweet from uh, oh. Stream Elements. Thank you, Snoots. Which prompts me to take what you were saying about my claws far more seriously. Do you think I ought to tend to them? In what way? The length. I believe you were suggesting they ought to be trimmed. I wasn't saying that, but I don't think it's such a bad idea. Perhaps I could help you with that? A manicure? What a marvelous idea! Let's say tomorrow, same time. Well, if I can get a, well, if I can, yeah. Well, if I can get away, I feel like she's playing me. You really are most kind. Thank you, human. And with those few words, my heart is a puddle at her feet.
That's Romancer again. Snooty booty. Hey, Snoots. Fancy seeing you here. Really? But this is my spot, human. I'm often to be found here. I let it go because I'm so excited about what I've brought. Take a hand. I hold my fists out in front of Snooty Booty. Oh, a game. How merry. She stretches out her paw in the direction of my left hand. Ta-da! I open to reveal a piece of... Cor... Cordostone? Cord... Cordostone... That I cut up in the lab. Oh, what a lovely rock you have there. It's... Corsus... Corstone. Corstone. Oh my god, I can't read. Uh, I thought it could work well as a nail file. What a clever thing you are. That's not even the best bit. Look! I open up the other fist to reveal my fantastic find. Oh my, what is that thing? It's nail polish. I found it in the lab. I have no idea who it could belong to, and honestly, I don't like to think too much about it. But I figured I could borrow it for one short hour without anybody missing it. And it looks like just your color. I squint at the bottom of the bottle. It's called Desire. I raise my eyebrows at the Sphinx. Oh, nail polish, you say? Show me, human. She suddenly seems more interested. I thought I, I thought I could try giving you a salon-style manicure fitting a lady. Most sweet of you. Now, shall we sort the snacks and drinks for first? Oh, uh, well, I came straight from work, so I didn't really... Oh, never mind. It would... It won't take you more than a moment to fetch a coconut, and then... And then we shall begin. I can't believe I'm actually doing her bidding. You have to hand it to her. That air of entitlement certainly gets her what she wants. I'm back quickly and out of breath. Within minutes, we settle in, into our session. Tell me if this feels at all uncomfortable, Snoots. I've never done this before, so guidance would be most helpful. It's surprisingly satisfying. I can see why other cats might engage in the process of scratching at trees and rocks. I've always thought they were hunting for termites like little scavengers. <laughs> Next foot. I've finished her hind legs and I'm on the f and and I'm on the final front paw. This stone works really well. Did I tell you how I how I cut it in the lab? I don't believe you did. So how does this nail polish work? Is it like paint? I ignore her rudeness. Exactly. Paint it on and wait for it to dry. I've never painted someone's nails before, so this will be a new experience for both of us. I open the bottle and make the first stroke. Try to keep as still as possible. I think you'll find I am statuesque in my stillness. Your hand is less stiff, less so. I know, sorry, your nails are just so tiny. I'm trying to color within the lines. What lines? Never mind, it's a human thing, I guess. I'm not sure I care for the smell of this nail polish. Really? I quite like it. It reminds me of hair drops. Of what? Oh, sorry, another human thing. Wow, look, though! Your paws look fantastic! Look at the drawing. Oh, boy. The long, sleek talons are blending with shiny red in the sunlight. Oh my, I am spectacular. Spectacular. She extends her claws momentarily and presses them into my arm, not enough to puncture the skin, but if I tried to move, it would hurt. For the first time, I appreciate what lethal weapons they could be. I must keep that in mind. So, come on then. I take out my catalog. Come on what? What is for the camera? Oh goodness, I hadn't realized this was going to be a photo... A, 
photographic session also. How exciting. Yes, well, I'm going to have to remove that varnish before I go, so I thought it would be nice for you to have a photo. Remove it? The Snoots cat looks appalled. Whatever for? Oh, Snoots, I'm sorry, didn't I say I can't leave it on you permanently? It would impede the natural retraction of your claws. Then I shall leave them extended. You can't do that. Her expression darkens. I beg your pardon. I thought for a moment I heard you tell me what I can't do. Surely I was mistaken. Compromise? No, Snoots, you heard me perfectly well. I must insist that you allow me to remove it. Insist? Her forehead wrinkles with her raised eyebrow. I need to tread carefully here. Ask your permission. May I please remove the varnish now? But it simply does not make sense. Why would it... Why do it in the first place? I know how much you enjoy things like this. Pampering. I thought it would be a fun thing for us to share. You had fun, didn't you? Well, yes, but I certainly... But I certainly wouldn't have had I known you were simply doing it to taunt me. I wasn't doing it to taunt you, Boots. She seems genuinely upset. I'm sorry. There is an awkward little standoff, her eyeing the rubbing alcohol, me eyeing her claws. I've racked my brains to think of a way to compromise with her, perhaps if I try to peel into her sense of style. I wonder if you'd like to try something. I don't know why I didn't do it in the first place, actually. I'm so forgetful sometimes. You're wittering. Well, just before I came to the island, there was a craze sweeping the fashion world. I can tell I've caught her attention. I read all about it in, uh, Bon Vivant magazine. Go on. It's a French thing, apparently. Snooty Booty cocks her head to the side. It's called, um, Pinky Flick. She's going for it. I feel encouraged. I'm thinking on my feet. All the celebrities are all the celebrities are doing it. Doing what? Having their pinky nail painted with all their other nails are left natural. Just one nail. She looks intrigued. Yes, it is. Re it really does look so striking and a la mode. Ice cr with ice cream. Show me. Bullseye. I go to take Snooty's paw in mine, but she snatches it away. No, show me. I pause, uncertain of what she means. Then she, then the penny drops. She wants me to paint my own pinky nail with desire. Oh, uh, gladly. I suppose I should have expected Snooty Booty to attempt to groom me at some point. Here goes. I swipe some of the red, uh, bright red polish on my left pinky. What do you think? Looks a la mode, right? With ice cream. I hold my pinky finger to the corner of my mouth coyly. Well, I suppose it does look rather fetching. I'll make a deal with you, human. I will wear my nails a la mode if you promise to keep your pain yours painted for the rest of your stay here. It's a deal. I doubt that such a tiny amount of varnish will cause her too much harm. It will come off nat naturally quite soon anyway. Mine, on the other hand, is going to be more permanent. I can't wait to explain this to Professor Popper. Miracle, it's time for some serious testing in the labs and 
intrigued to see what kind of work the professor has up his sleeve. Hmm. I think I'm gonna skip this one. I skip the research. Recon 2. Environmental research. Trixie has been telling me about a strange phenomenon in a nearby rock pool. I've decided it's probably worth checking out. <clears throat> time off today so that Trixie can show me the water pool she's been telling me about. I have some sample bottles in my backpack along with some food and a blanket. If it's nice, we can have a picnic lunch here. Lunch there. So these pools appear to be different colors. They don't appear to be, Humi. They are. One moment. I'm pretty sure Trixie is my favorite. Okay. Hmm? Well, we can't prove that until we've tested them. Reflection, refraction, and dispersion can play some fancy tricks on the eye. Pooh to your testing! You take all the magic away, science person. It makes your world very dull, I think. Maybe you're right, Trixie. Let's wait and see what wonders you are going to show me, eh? That's right! This way! She appears, she disappeared from sight. I run to the cliffside where she was walking and look over, the, look over the edge. I can see that she's jumped to a small rock shelf about four meters down from where I'm stood. Come on, you can do it. Don't be afraid, cat. I'm more concerned about how I will get back up again, actually. There are kind of steps further along. But this way is closer to the entrance. Not wanting to appear too much of a killjoy, I clamber over the edge and lower myself down, dropping the last few feet. Impressive! You're getting a feline spring in your step. Hmm, you say so. I'm worried I may have twisted my ankle, but I don't want to say anything. Follow me, Springy! She's disappeared again. It's like keeping up with a jackrabbit. Follow my voice. And suddenly an alarming sound is coming from between two rock faces. It's high-pitched, screeching, and very loud. I squeeze through the crevice and am in what looks like a cave without a ceiling. Trick, stop! The sound is so amplified in this enclosure, it has become deafening. Sorry, Hummy, but it feels so good. Have a try. What? Yo, shout, scream, sing at the top of your voice, loud as you can. Oh, um, really? I feel self-conscious, but I, I am dying to have a go. You only live... Mm. You only... You only live once, and it's so fabulous. She makes the noise again, and this time I join in. It's fantastic. The acoustics are something else. It's like an amphitheater. Eventually, we run out of steam, and I flop to the ground exhausted, but exhilarated, too. After we have our... If after we have caught our breath, I am ready to push onwards. We better get on, get on if we don't want to be back too late. We're here! I'm 
I'm surprised. I was expecting something more impressive, I suppose. This is the place? I look around for the first time and notice several small pools of water not much larger than puddles around the edges of the enclosure. Oh, I see. I bend down next to the nearest pool and see straight away that it is the deepest red. It looks like blood! Look at mine! Like liquid sky! I cross to the opposite side where Tri Trixie is sitting, and sure enough, there is the clearest, richest blue water. And, mel and melted emeralds? Again, I follow her to find another pool's green as spring foliage. Then another of deepest purple, one of orange, yellow, pink. Well, it certainly is as amazing as you said, Trix. How strange that they are all so different. What's causing it? It has to be a trick of the light. Put your hand in. Oh, I'm not sure that's a good idea. There could be any number of bacteria making this happen. Best not to touch until we're sure it's safe. I've done it lots, it's fine! I glance over and sure enough she has her furry little paws in the golden colored water. Somewhat reassured, I scoop some of the blue water up to sniff it. It smells wonderful, as though it has been perfumed. What is that smell? It's really familiar. I take out my bottles and begin collecting the water as my theory about the light is blown when I line the little bottles up together to each retain their original hue. Something is dying this water! I can't wait to get it back to the lab and run some tests. We can go back the easy way if you like. Follow me. We head back along the rock shelf and go past the spot we jumped down on the way here. Further along, there's an ascent, just like Trixie had said, but, it, but I would hardly call it steps. Someone has clearly tried to make a trail here, but it's all a bit rough and ready. Further along still, I can make out a large empty metal drum. It's rusted, obviously discarded some time ago. I get a closer look and see that there is a tap near the base and the remains of a label, but I can barely make it out, make out the words. I take a picture of it with my catalog to decipher later. The, perf the perfume I smelled in the cave seems to be stronger here and I'm very intrigued. Trixie couldn't be less interested in all this. She is hap happily skipping a ahead, looking for a good picnic spot for us. I will have to be patient with my investigations. testing in the labs. I'm intrigued to see what kind of work the professor has up his sleeve. Follicle miracle. My stomach is queasy. I really don't want to do this. It's, it's strange. I'm used to treating subjects with medication and injections, but something about this doesn't feel right. Hello, you. I smile, I smile at the gentle cat on the table in front of me. I look at the syringe in, in my hand. I turn to the professor. What are we testing for with these meds again? He looks up from his desk. Is that a problem, Sheesh? Yeah, I've already told you. Um, it's supposed to stimulate the hair growth. Why do we need to stimulate hair growth? Why indeed. Uh, ours is not meant to ours is not question why, Stacy. The likes of you and I perform the tasks set up by the people who pay our wages. Such is life, eh? 
professor returns to his work and I understand the conversation is over. I look back at the little cat. His name is Smokey. He's a likely like a cat with very short, fine hair, a real sweetie. I suppose the professor is right. This is just my job, and although I feel terrible, I find a way to ignore the pangs of guilt and inject Smokey with the medication. He squeals, but it's over quickly, and he needs him to return to his cage. How long does this usually take? The professor looks up again, slightly irritated. I don't know, Shishi, but you need to find that out, aren't you, my dear? Oh, yes, of course. I make a note of the time and observe the cat. After five minutes, there's no noticeable change. Ten minutes, still no change. After half an hour, I think I notice his hair looks a little different, but I suspect my eyes are playing tricks on me. One hour in, and all of a sudden, I can see the hair is visibly longer and seems to be continuing to grow. I must say I'm very impressed and a little confused. I decide to take a tea break. Smokey seems content to nap for a while. That's a good idea. Can I get you a cup of tea, Professor? Oh no, I do not know how you can tolerate the power of stuff they brew in the mess tent. I have my friend with some coffee here, thank you. Fair enough, I'll be back in a bit. Begun, I, I've only been gone for ten minutes at, at the most, but I, run, but I enter with my mug of tea. I instantly, but as I enter with my mug of tea, I notice instantly notice the drama taking place in Smokey's cage. I find it hard to stifle a laugh. Oh my goodness, Professor, have you seen this? The professor looks up, exasperated by another interruption, but then he notices the cage. Oh dear, I'll do just land on a get him out. I open the front of the cage and pull out the large hairball that Smokey has turned into. His fur tumbles over my arm as I cradle the bewildered cat. Well, I know. Very interesting, isn't it, Stacy? Uh, I think it's still growing, Professor. I do think a lot of actually should consider the clippers. The professor hands me a small set of silver electric clippers, and I immediately begin using them all on the ever-expanding Smokey. I continue to shave for the next 15 minutes until he finally seems to run out of fur. Oh, that's a lot of hair. We both stand staring at the pile of fur at our feet. Just keep a small amount of testing before I throw out the back of Mara can dispose of it later. Mara? Ms. Marigold. I can say she's most interesting findings. Uh, thank you, sir. Although the results had nothing to do with me, I'm f left feeling a tad guilty about Smokey's ordeal. As I place him back in his cage, I check for any signs of trauma, and when satisfied he's okay, I awkwardly take my leave. Yes! Yes! New unlocks! Yes. 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 Okay, care, careful. No. Careful. Careful yes. what you're doing with that map of yours. Just need a key, that's all. Are you sure about that? Yes. Okay, I'll plug them right into my ear. I'm saying yes right in your ear. I know, but careful what you do with my ear. Would you? Snooty Booty is in the habit now of holding out a limp manicured paw for me to massage. I resignedly oblige. Oh, do you know? That reminds me, I have something for you. Something for me? Oh, look at you with your mouth agape. Do you close it? You embarrass us both. I'm sorry, I just didn't expect you'd ever think of me when I'm not 
with you. Ha! You do make me laugh, human. Oh my, are you serious? Well, I'll have you know, I think of you a great deal. You are my most faithful subject, don't you know? Now, if you want your gift, carry me further down the beach and I'll show you where I hid it. Cradling the hairless cat like a baby, I stroll barefoot along the beach. Sudibu directs me with a wave of her paw every now and then. After a while, she loudly commands that I stop and put her down. Here. Smoothie says with her regular level of enthusiasm, pointing a perfectly filed claw at a mound of sand. I buried it. I suppose you want me to dig it up then, eh, Boots? Ha! You always know what to say to make me laugh, human. It is quite a talent, I tell you. With a sigh, I start digging. Thankfully, she didn't bury it very deep, and after a few seconds, I find a small object wrapped in a silk scarf. We wouldn't want to get sand into it, would we, dear? Snooty, Snooty Booty says with a small smile. I carefully open the flimsy silk bundle and turn the contents over in my hands. It's a little black tub with a plain label stuck to it that reads Skin Cream P103. Do you love it? Um, what is it? Oh dear, can you not read? Yes, it says skin cream, but I don't exactly know what that entails. Oh, you see, one massages skin cream into one's skin. Yes, I understand that, Boots, but whose is this? Where did you find it? Well, it's yours now, human. I roll my eyes and further inspect the tub. It's it's very small and plain, with no cosmetic logo or name to be found. I pop open the plastic lid, and sure enough, it's full of, it's full to the brim with goop. I scoop out some of my uh, I scoop some out with my index finger and smell it. It smells disgusting, like bin juice or something. Boots! I can't put this on my skin. I will attract all sorts of bugs and wildlife. Oh, come now! We must suffer for our beauty, mustn't we? What is in this stuff? Booty, where did you get it from? All I ask is that you try some on your skin and tell me you don't see instant results. Oh, Snooty, have you been using this stuff? Of course. Without knowing where it's come from? But I know exactly where it has come from. Well then, will you please let me in on the secret? Oh, calm down, human. You will give yourself more wrinkles. Let us take a moment to ponder how my generosity in giving you a thoughtful gift has developed into you interrogating me in such a brutish manner. I take a deep breath. Snooty booty, I do apologize and thank you sincerely. Of course I am touched by your generosity and consideration. However, I am also quite concerned for your welfare. Did you take this thing from the lab? Oh no, not at all. Thank goodness. I took it from the stockpile behind the lab, where the fire pits are. You mean the incinerators? Snooty, did you take this from the toxic waste bins? I have no idea what they're called, but they're routinely... But they routinely give forth the most incredible produce. Waste is indeed a fitting word. I think you'll find toxic is the objective word in that title, Snoots. The contents of those bins are meant to be burned. But why are they burning skin cream? I further scrutinize the tub and conclude that it really is some kind of beauty product. This makes no sense. Actually, Princess, this is a fantastic present. I'm going to take it right now and for further examination. Thank you so much for this. Well, finally, a little gratitude. I am very grateful. Well, you can, re you can report back to me with how splendid you look after a few applications. Oh, I will. One thing, though, Snooty, just to be clear, have you been using this? I have. Please don't throw me in the water again. And no problems? 
As you can see, human, my skin is as smooth and clear as porcelain. Yes, so why incinerate it? <laughs> Hi, Mysterious, and yes, Snooty Booty. That's her name. Yes, so why incinerate it? Speak up, human, you're mumbling. Nothing, Snooty. I just need your word that you will not use any more products that you find near the lab again, okay? Oh, I see your game, human. You want to be the fairest of them all, eh? No, that's not it. Very well, human. I shall go au natural for a while, and you will see how, without even a touch of skin cream, I am still as radiant as a star. Oh, okay, Snooty. Uh, challenge accepted? Indeed. Thank you for the bit. Yes, new unlocks. Let's see. Let's do the recon thingy. Snooty booty's gift. I'm worried about the skin cream Snooty found. I'd feel a lot better if I took some time to analyze it. <clears throat> How does Snooty Booty keep finding experimental cosmetics? We're on an island in the middle of nowhere. It, it makes no sense. And this one from the incinerator, no less. I decided to run some tests on it. Snooty Booty developed some nasty welts after using this cream. I want to see what it's made from. I have a feeling this is not something the professor would want me to be poking around in, so I've come to the lab late at night to make sure I don't get any unwanted attention. I'm quickly able to identify a number of common natural skincare ingredients like shea butter and chamomile but there are some other components that I can't immediately identify. I checked for cat saliva. Maybe we're looking at the same kind of product as the stuff Snooty Booty found wash up, washed up on the beach, but no match. I run the sample through the database of organic compounds to see if there are other matches. As I suspected, this cream uses some other cat-based ingredients. This time it looks like cat urine is being used. I had not, but I had not, I had better not share that little discovery with Snooty Booty. I decided to check for any clues out by the incinerators. Maybe I can find out a little more about where these things are coming from. At the back of the tent area, there are a couple of large pits that are for the disposal of harmful waste from the lab. There's nothing incinerating right now, so I can dig around a little in the smoldering ashes. I'm tentatively moving the debris about with a stick. So far, it seems to be just soot and cinders, no clues. Suddenly, the silence is disrupted by the sound of someone entering the lab. I make myself scarce by crawling around the far side of a nearby bush. As luck would have it, I happen to have ended up in an ideal vantage point to be able to see into the lab through the clear gap in the canvas. Two men en enter with a large crate. I recognize them as the ferryman and his son. Professor Popper is with them. He directs them to place the crate on the book top. The professor reaches in and brings out a small tub that looks identical to the one Snooty Booty found. My guess is that this is the next batch in for testing. The professor stops what he's doing abruptly and looks at his catalog. I presume he is receiving a phone call. He dismisses the two men with a wave of his hand. As soon as they're gone, he turns his attention to the catalog. He looks ancient, anxious as he speaks. Joshi must be napping. Oops. Sorry, Joshi. Just been delivered. I shall make a fresh. I shall make. I shall make a start first in Palmer. 
Yes, madam. I certainly will, madam. With all due respect, I do understand the emergency, but I shall, I'm sure you understand the need for your daughter to join us. But I'm sure you will be ready for the deadline. The time to testing in the sample on server 104 is going far more smoothly in 103. Sampling, the improvements are quite encouraging. There's a long silence from the expression on his face. I imagine he is being lectured. Very important to cross the quote their day to her. The island itself has a very significant effect on the sample. And he still has some sense left to use. We are making a progress, of course, as so we can go straight away. The call ends abruptly, presumably Adam and cut him off. He looks angrier than I've ever seen him. He marches out of the lab and heads off in the direction of his tent. I sneak away from the bushes and head back to my own tent. I can continue with my investigations another time. All the rest. I love the map. Magic! I love you. Love you too. Having nice snatches of nap of a nap in between me needing you to read for the professor. Maybe. 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 That's a yes. Love you. Mm -hmm. Oh, the delicacy of a moment is sometimes only matched by the beauty of the moonlight's reflection on the sea. Snooty Booty turns her big shining silver eyes up to meet mine. Human, I have lived a long life and only the first of nine, don't you know? It has been much the same as far as for as far back as my fragile memory reaches. Seeing the moon reflected on the sea would once mean only that I I had stayed awake too long. Only that I had stayed awake too long and that I shall see that same shade of grey reflected in the circles under my eyes the next day. However, seeing how you conduct yourself, human, with the grace of a drunken fruit fly and yet the confidence of a red-bottomed mandrel has left me quite inspired. You not care one bit about how you look. I subtly try to comb my hair with my fingers, a snooty booty turns her attention back to the moon. I have found since meeting you that when uh, when one cares about one's appearance, one finds the capacity co to compare more about other things. Is that so, Boots? Quite so, human. Indeed, I have found it rather freeing to bathe in salt water, something which not long ago would have caused me to turn grey with anxiety. With anxiety. In the same vein, I feel I am odd, owed some thanks for teaching you a thing or two about proper skin care. Snooty, your demand that I use a night cream caused me to break out in the hives. But once they subsided, you were left with a very healthy glow. I sigh. Stacy? Yes, Snooty Rudy? There is a poem I half remember. The words have become irrelevant, but the sentiment is so enduring that it is almost enough to cause me to weep at the thought of it. Music is also like that, don't you find? I smell and smell. All of the senses, in fact, are the palette that colors our experiences and leaves an, an undeliable mark on the soul. That's that's beautiful. Human, I believe you and I are both aesthetics. We're what? We share an artiste's appreciation of the seducant. And again, what? Really, do try to keep up. I can tell I'm somewhat spoiling the mood here, so I try to keep my mouth so I keep my mouth shut and try to look engaged. 
I have suffered on this godforsaken island from the lack of many things, but nothing quite has matched the pain of feeling alone. Not having a companion to share the more delicate sensibilities that life has to offer. An alluring scent, a vibrant hue, an epicurean delight, all the subtle joys that are wasted on our more uncivilized cohabitants. It has been like air to my suffocation, sharing time with you human. Why, Snoots, thank you. I enjoy our time together, too. And so... She pl plows on as though I am an interruption. I feel that together you and I might create something rather wonderful. Oh. A masterpiece! Oh, right. A masterpiece. Out of what? Out of us, human. A union. A joining together of souls. I don't know. A marriage of hearts and minds. Are you saying what I think you're saying, Snooty? I am saying that I am fond of you. Enough to give me cause to believe that we might be able to commit to each other in the time-honored tradition of love, human. Oh. Oh, wow. I love you, too. I love you, too. I, well, I am amazed. What you're saying is is more than I could have hoped for. So it is agreed, human. You shall dote on me as my equal from now on. Absolutely. I'm 100% about the doting. Snooty will certainly keep that part uh, keep that part of this agreement. I am a little more suspicious about the equal part somehow. But as we sit together admiring the huge orange moon, that orange is that that moon is not orange. That orange is not moon. I feel quietly confident that she will learn with time and a patient teacher. Patient of goals. Snooty booty! And we shall finish with research. What do I want to do? Uh, no, I actually don't. Research. Wait, no. I want to see extras. Extras, extras, extras. Uh, let's see. Ooh, I could probably do the pirates thing. The other one. Blah, 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 blah. I want to see, uh, this guy's side of the story. story. Well, as Captain Libby seems to have disappeared, my choice is obvious. Would you tell me your story, Captain Corn? <sighs> ah, crap. I need you to read Captain Corn. I did the pirate thing. Okay. <laughs> Stretch as you like. Wise choice in any event. Take your seat if you will. The story is a long one. Oh, uh, I do need to be back in time for tea. Then I shall hasten the telling. It began with a merchant run for the Kitty, uh, for the, for the Kitty Fisher Shipping Company. I've been contracted to the company for some time and I've done this particular run many times before. There's nothing in it that's very taxing for a captain of my experience, particularly meant for the crew to the standard of the men I personally had picked for the sailing of the Kitty Desire. Although the life was long and it was also straightforward, I had never anticipated any problems. However, this trip proved, trip proved to be out of the ordinary in so many ways. The weather was against us from the start. Freak storms had been playing the normally peaceful scene. Several ships had been reported being taken quite far off their usual trajectory. So there was particularly pr was proving to be a blight to be a blighter. Men were doing everything by the book, and I would as I at the book as I would have expected for my crew, tying down and battening the hatches. There was no point in being on deck, so I decided to write my log in my cabin. The rest I knew anything irregular was an was an almighty crash that sent us reeling. I gathered myself and made my way to the deck, being buffeted and blown so that I needed to hold on tight to whatever was available. Sam, my cabin boy, was the first crew member I came by. I could barely hear him above the sound of the storm. 
Pirates, Captain Pirates! I cannot even leave my ears. We had pirates on this route, and all of my time on this route, and all my time as a captain, far too audacious a challenge. My first thought was that they must have been at, as much at the mercy of the storm as we, but that assumption was quickly dispelled by the shout. Pirates boarding! Pirates boarding! It was unthinkable. I needed to gain control of the situation as quickly as possible. I drew my musket as I emerged onto the deck, uh, on deck to the awful sight of human vermin scurrying in a rotten the rain and crashing waves, trying to overwhelm my crew and get your hand. I could see the vessel listing per perilously close to us, and on the bridge, the unmistakable figure of that she devil. Captain Libby? The Witch of the Waves, Captain Libby indeed. I stood my ground, holding onto the main mast and pointed my musket in her direction. I could not hear her laughter after the din of the storm, but I saw her head thrown back and a wild hair flying and then she grabbed the cutlass at her hip and raised high in the air in fear and defiance. But at that moment that I saw a wall of water rise up behind her as though swarmed by her, the last thing I saw it was a terrible sound as though the very gates of hell were torn open, I was struck to the deck and black and fell. Ah, uh, that was what made the huge hole in the stern. Yes, we came apart on impact and the whole ship was a goner. I don't know how long we had been in the water. I regained consciousness the waters were calmer and we were drift drifting on a piece of wood towards a wall of black rock. Sam seemed to be holding me as I floated in the water. Captain, you're alive. I didn't dare hope. What happened, boy? We crashed. The pirates come around into us with such force that I fear all of all are dead for this. As I gathered my thoughts, I realized I could hear others mourning and crying out all around us. Not alone, Sam. Listen to others. Help me up. Between us, we managed to get onto a makeshift craft. I sat up and looked around, taking stock of the other, taking stock of the other carnage. There were men, many of them clinging onto whatever it was, was floating, keeping themselves from sinking down into a watery grave. I tried to make myself hard, hard, heard as far as possible. Men, we need to stay together. Hold on to each other to stop yourselves from drifting. I'm going to lead us toward the land. We have to get to those rocks. Use whatever you can to paddle and follow me. You're a hero, Captain. Yes, it was laborious, but we made progress and eventually reached what appeared to be an opening in the rocks. As we stumbled to land, the gravity of our flight became more apparent. Help the wounded. Pull whatever you can from the water. Anything may prove useful. We don't know what's ahead. What about the pirates? We were all in it together. There is no place for here for contention. Survival is a great leveler, so we helped it. We all helped each other as best we could. We found our resting place, where you now live. Base camp? But of course, there were no cozy tents or fire pits to keep us warm. It must have been terrifying. One tries not to indulge one's own fear when looking for, out for men, one's men. We managed to make a rudimentary camp for ourselves in a surprisingly short time, considering the condition of the men. Each did what they could, tending to the wounded, building fires. Food was primary consideration. If the men didn't eat, we would very quickly deteriorate. So hunting parties were put together and sent out to scout for food sources. One made of pirates come and the other my best men. Sadly, not again was successful, bringing only some unfair, unfamiliar tubers and plants that were boiled to make a soup. I knew that we could not continue for long living on grass and seaweed. Men need meat. I became ever more determined over the coming days, sending out scouting parties in, par in pairs throughout the day and night. Each told the same story. No animal life at all, except for cats. We already knew that the soft creation of very ordinary domestic looking domestic cats lying all, living all over the island, but as the men emerged further afield, or forged further afield, they came back with tales of a very different species of feline on the furthest end of the island. These were larger than usual and very hostile to those who came close. It wasn't long before the pirates began trapping cats and treating them as a food source. Some of the, pirates, some of the men were bitten and scratched. It was unthinkable to an officer or a gentleman, of course, but these barbarians didn't seem to care what went into their bellies. They paid the price, of course, and quite quickly, too. The sickness ran through their ranks so expediently that their numbers were halved within days. Most flung themselves on the rocks to their death to escape the hideous plague the cats visited upon them. Some wandered off into the jungle, never to be seen again. 
I remember one lad, a pirate named Jim, lost his wits and began drawing strange pictures in the sand of half men, half cats. He tried to escape by launching out to sea, strapped to an empty barrel. No doubt he perished along with the others. Aw, Jim. Hmm. Captain, if you refuse to eat the cats, how is it that you are, um, the way that you are? I don't remember too much about the transition, nor anything else apart from what I told you. I know I was bitten, but I can't remember how. Do you know what happened to me? He looks so small and vulnerable. No. I just want to cuddle him and no. maintain a respectful demeanor. Cuddle him. I suppose you were all overwhelmed eventually. My understanding so far is that the process is different in each person depending on the amount of DNA that was transferred. The outcome, however, always seems to be the same. You turn into a cat. Yes, I see. Of course, I know that, but what if I intend? Why can I not remember? I'm guessing that you and Captain Lib Libby have stayed close? Yes, we seem forever to be tied, in spite of our differences. Then we must continue to talk about what happened and your story. The woman never stops telling me. So that memory has stayed alive. Anything you haven't deliberately kept conscience fades over time until you lose it completely. I see. I'm sorry, Captain. Well then, I suppose I ought to go and find that which had the cat and listen to her story yet again. Tell each other often. Keep it alive. I promise. Help is coming. I'm working on it. I need, I need to go now, but I will be back soon. It breaks my heart to leave these two, but I have to get back to camp before the professor starts looking for me. Pirates. 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 Has it unlocked anything? I don't think it has. I mean, it doesn't say how to unlock things either. <sighs> so, research. I guess I might as well finish this, and that'll be the end of the uh, this uh, session, this, uh... the stream, because I have to get ready for work. Poor Socks doesn't seem to be getting better. Time to put my veterinary training to the test. I'm worried about Socks. None of the treatments so far seems to be clearing up his wound. Creams 116 hasn't helped one bit. In fact, my gut feeling is telling me it may, have, may be the cause of the deterioration. The entire site is now swollen and too sore to touch, even with a soft cotton pad. I ask, I decide to ask the professor for his advice. I'm sorry to disturb you, sir, but I need your advice on socks. Send pick foods. I snip a picture on my catalog and send it to professor to the professor. Yeah, that does look nasty. We tried frame one sixteen. I did. Sight worse, swollen and inflamed. So just persevering, cream would seem to take a little bit with her. I feel doubtful, but resign myself to the professor's seniority. If one's. Oh, whoop, that's you. If one's hurt, I try slowly putting it in the fridge, head back. I rummage around in the fridge until I find the red bag behind a box of vitamin supplements. Pour the milk into a small bowl, and I am relieved that Sock seems to like it. I sit with him as he laps it up and keep an eye on him for a while. After about an hour, I'm satisfied that he's sleeping happily and all his vitals, vital stats are normal. I've come to the forest to gather my thoughts. This morning I noticed another change in my appearance. Up until now it's been easy to yep. cover up my transition. Blah. 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 Okay, I can't see. Yeah. Here. Spread it here. The shade is perfect. She's indicating a small spot on the sand beneath a large palm tree for our midday nap. I begin to spread the old blanket 
I've been dragging, uh, the old blanket I've been dragging behind me, it's the one I used, used to have on my bunk when I lived in a tent. That memory is beginning to fade and fade a little around the edges. I still recall how conflicted I felt, though I knew I wanted to be with Snooty. Oh, but hey, I, Mysterious. I was strong. Do you cheer a bit saying Snooty, buddy? Oh, yeah, that was a while ago. Oh. I, I thanked him and said hi. Them. I thanked them and said hi. But I had a strong urge to keep working on the antidote. Eventually, the decision was made for me, for me. I found it too difficult to remember things in the lab. I kept making mistakes. Then I sort of allowed myself to sink into my transition. It was quite gentle, and the reward was worth any problems. Hey! Aw, that's cute! Let's hope we're not just a white sphinx. Yes. Mm, yes, this is... This bit of shade is perfect, just like you. But really, Snoots, I don't know why you need this old thing. The sand is so soft and warm. Also, it creeps me out a bit. It reminds me... For goodness sake, Stacy, you've been a cat for five minutes, and already you... You already... Already you know what's best for us. May I remind you that you have fur to protect your skin, but mine is exposed and far more delicate? Oh, thank God. I suppress a giggle. Yes, of Persian. course, my love. Hmm? It's Persian? Maybe. You have the skin like the wings of a butterfly. Yes! And I have no idea why that amuses you so. I'm just happy. You make me happy. Well, you could make me very happy right now. Name it. There's nothing I wouldn't do for you. You really ought to be more mindful of those rash declarations. I mean it, just name it, anything. Well, fortunately, I have a very kind and humble nature, so I shan't take advantage of your simplicity. All I want is that you fan me with a palm leaf. I look around until I find one I can comfortably curl my tail around. This isn't nearly as easy as it used to be, but practice makes perfect, my dear. We settle down in the peace and quiet of the afternoon, me gently wafting the palm leaf over a snoozing snoots. Uh, how much more blissful could life be? I'm half tempted to warn the new research assistant just to just throw in the towel from the start and join us, but I suppose they have their own journey's end. I'm so glad I found mine. No. it saves. I think we should be a guy next. Okay. Because we've been two girls so far. I, I, I did want to go girl guy. Do you but... want to be generic guy number one? What's generic guy number two look like? Shit, I, I baby. think we should get rid of this. <laughs> sure. Uh, get this one out of the Random way. Random name? Huh? Random name? Going until, keep going until we see, until we see a uh, generic. I think mean, that sounds like it could be stereotypically black. <laughs> Stacy number two. Stacy number two. No, Stacy with an E, because I, I didn't know this one was. Uh, I didn't know there was an E in the Stacy, so I just put S T A C Y. Oh, uh, Stacky. Stacy. Chungers. Chungers? What the yep, hell? Yep, there we go, Chungers. <laughs> Shit. What the hell name kind of that? Kind of name is that? Shit, baby, I'm Chungus. Oh, yeah. 
It's a long boat journey. My legs are a bit wobbly. They make my way up the wooden jet and meet the security guard who's come to collect me. ID. I rummage about my bag until I find the laminated security pads I was issued with on the mainland. Three months later. Two months later. Come on then, follow me. I have to walk at quite a pace to keep up with him. I'm not a social type, so we truck along in silence until we're camping outside a large tent. Has this already been read? He's waiting for you in there. Has this already been mm -hmm. seen? No? Okay. Mm -hmm. Glad to have you on board, Shanga. Shall we go through a few formalities and call it a day so you can get some rest before you start work properly tomorrow? Sounds good to me, sir. So first we have a little rough fight, so I have a little different. I have water, coffee, and we can't get five for whiskey. Uh, we've already done water and whiskey. Yeah, he doesn't have coffee. I wanna, why, why is there no coffee option? I don't know. Why is, why is there no coffee option? Shit, baby, I'm a tea lover. Let's go with that. I'm a tea lover. Is that on the menu by any chance? For some reason, the fear shade tastes like cat piddle. I really wouldn't recommend it. Cat piddle? <laughs> he pours me a cup of coffee from his canteen instead. Fortunately, it's great coffee. We spend the next hour going through my kit. Well, typical stuff. Has this all been a thing? Mm -mm. Alright. All typical stuff apart from my super gadget. It's called a catalog and it does They're all sorts of shortening it. All as sorts you can, of swanky things. Can. Even plays music. I meet some of the local cats and learn how to scan them with it, which is a lot of fun. Bye, man. I'm showing my tent to settle in for the night. Save it. Okay, it's six o'clock. We should probably play stop since it has saved. Let's do it. I'm okay. good with that. I'm absolutely good with that. We should check for the weather. Alright, I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching slash listening. <laughs> um, I'll hope, I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye! Mm -hmm. Adios. Oh, and there's no stream tomorrow, because it's a uh, date night for Joshi and me. Yeah, quick. <laughs> yes, Kang. So, take care, and stay safe.